Hello and welcome to Muppet Sational, the UK's biggest Muppet Show podcast, hosted by three huge Muppet fans. Join us each week as we dive into an episode of Jim Henson's classic variety show, now finally available on Disney+. Plus. This week, it's Season 2, Episode 17, starring the supercalifragilistic expialidocious, although you can say it backwards, which is docious ali expiistic fragicalirupus, but that's taking it a bit far, don't you think? Julie Andrews! <laughs> it's time to get things started on the chronological, explorational, conversational, Muppetsational! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Muppet Sational. I'm Lewis Chandler. I'm Jade Turner. And I'm Emma Chandler. And as you would have seen from our episode title, we are joined this week by a special guest. They are a prolific puppeteer who is known for the hilarious Dodge the Dog from CBBC and CBBS, and originated Gonga on the Furchester Hotel and subsequently Sesame Street. He also fulfilled a lifelong dream of ours, working with Tina Fey on Muppets Most Wanted, Please welcome to the show, Warwick Brownlow Pie. Thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, Tina Fey. She's nice. Yeah. <laughs> She's nice. Okay, She's really an nice. Icon. <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> I was more interested in the Muppets, but she's really nice. <laughs> then you're in the right company. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Warwick, thank you so much for joining us on this very grim and rainy <laughs> Sunday morning. I don't know when people will be listening to this, but uh, Warwick is recording from, I believe, a bunker. A bunker, yeah. I'm hiding out in the bunker, <laughs> just in case the rain gets really bad. <laughs> yeah. It might be the gulag from Muppets Most Wanted, to be honest. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. It's, it was really nice in the gulag, actually. It's nice and warm. <laughs> it looked cold, but inside it was nice and warm. <laughs> Well, that's glad. Well, I'm glad to hear they were <laughs> they were treating the puppeteers well. You would expect on a, at least a Muppet production that they would. <laughs> they do. Um, Warwick, you are the first puppeteer that we've <gasps> actually had ah. on Muppet Sational. Um, so I suppose, I mean, there's a few questions we really want to ask you, but mm. I suppose the first one is kind of almost a combination of how did you first get into the Muppets and how much were the Muppets an influence on you becoming a puppeteer? Ah, so... I first got into The Muppets when The Muppet Show was in repeats on BBC One in like, I think it was 86, 87. Yeah. 86, 87. Um, my mum was busy doing something. So like she just sat me down in front of the television and that was me. I was I was in. I was a fully paid up member of The Muppet Club <laughs> and I've been obsessed ever since. I think about it all the time. Um, so there was no other way for me. That was it. I was done. That was, my life story was, was kind of written then and there. <laughs> yeah. But did you ever have any sort of? Because to me, like the Muppets is kind of like the pinnacle mm. in a way of kind of puppeteering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did was that? Did you have any sort of thought in your mind that actually working for the Jim Henson Company or working with the Muppets was even a possibility, or was that just like a you know? a pipe dream that felt so far off in some sort of distance. Um, it, I just had blind faith. I didn't I didn't think it wasn't possible. I just would tell people yeah. I'm going to work with the Muppets. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it just never occurred to me that it wouldn't be possible. Um, yeah. I don't know why. Uh, I just thought they were local to me. You know, you know, when you see as a kid, you see things on television and, and it feels like it's in your city. Yeah. So I knew they were American. Yeah, even though they were being made in Britain, weirdly. It's that sort of weird sort of Anglo-American sensibility yeah. the Muppets have that makes them feel so familiar. But you've not only sort of worked as a puppeteer for the Muppets, you also got to originate your own Muppets. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's yours. Your name is right next <laughs> to it. How do you go about sort of building a character like Gonga? Well, in that particular situation it, lots of things have to fall in place for that to happen you know like it starts yeah. it doesn't it doesn't just happen overnight it starts 10 years ago or 11 years ago when you're just um you meet the guy who does elmo which which happened and yeah. and he's like oh i need some help tomorrow and i'm like of course <laughs> so it starts way back there you know like the being introduced into the, the muppet family and becoming a trusted member and all that kind of thing and none of these things are said it's not like yay today you are trusted <laughs> it's just like <laughs> well, you know it's like that guy was good he turns up on time he doesn't let us down 
he gets the coffees in too. <laughs> Bring them back next time. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's just all those little things. They kind of flip flop. And so it started with me uh, helping the guy, Kevin, who used to do Elmo, whenever they came to London for promo tours. And it would just be like doing Elmo's hands and dressing the puppet or, I don't know, standing in for it, for him when in rehearsals so he could see the bigger picture and stuff. Um, and then like the Muppets came and did an X Factor thing. So they were like, don't forget that guy. He, he's good. He's helpful. And then the movie came up. And so it, it happens like that. And then by the time the first just a hotel came, I was kind of the guy here or one of the guys here. When I say guys, I mean yeah. people. Louise Gold is one of the guys. <laughs> One of the people. Of course. Um, I don't mean males. I mean, you know. Uh, <laughs> so I think guys, even even in 2022, I think people, <laughs> guys is still fun. It's just yeah. a collective you know I mean. noun for now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so when the fascist hotel came up, I was there and Louise was there. And that's when I saw Gonga for the first time. He was laid out on the table. So when we like start a show, all the puppets are just laid out on the table in like... Um, plastic bags like a morgue yeah. <laughs> like a muppet morgue yeah. a very merry muppet morgue yeah. good special name in uh, yeah. plastic bags and so like everybody runs their eyes along and like who do i like who do i like and i saw gonger on the very end because he wasn't an important character back then he just hit the gong for like three seconds in an episode and i was like oh yes that guy talks to me like i want i want to play with him <laughs> but he had already somebody had dibs on him and so that was a pup you know it was a done deal i wasn't going to do that and i ended up doing the the guests, like in 40 Towers, each episode, there's a guest. I was that kind of mm. guy. And then in the second series, or the second block that we did, that guy didn't come back to perform Gonga. So I was like, oh, I should try that. <laughs> so I went over <laughs> there and I was just like, if you let me do this, I'll make it a good thing. Uh, yeah. Very brazen of me. Um, but I just knew that it could be something. Like I... I think anybody could have made that puppet into something. It looks so good. It's such a cool puppet. It just has a great look about it, yeah. And and part of that is that, like, you know, lots of the characters for that show, they went through this whole, like, um, there's a committee, you know, there's loads of designers, there's loads of execs and producers and writers. Everybody has input in those lead main characters. And lots of work goes into that. But because he was just one of the monsters, um, it was just left to a friend of mine, Andrea, to make. You know, she was like, they were like, you make up the five Tea Time Monsters and Gonga. Uh, just take the scraps and do whatever you want with them kind of thing. So that's why I think he looks so cool because not, I'm not saying that no thought went into it, but not a lot of thought went into it. You know, <laughs> I think it, it, if, if it would have, if it had gone to committee, they would have been like, give him bigger eyes. So he looks like a preschool mm -hmm. character. It, you know, bigger pupils, give him a smile. Don't make him look so scrawny. All that kind of stuff. Whereas he looks a bit feral. Yeah. And I think that's because w just one person's vision of like, I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to try that. Yeah. So I, p I picked up the character and I loved it so much. And as because he wasn't a main character, whilst the main guys were doing their stuff, I could just play in the back and develop it and come up with little bits that I wanted to do. Uh, so that's a long winded <laughs> explanation no, of how that happened. Um, and it's the best way to do it because there's no pressure on me. Like I'm not a lead yeah. character. I had like uh, the guests to do still in the second series, but when I wasn't doing those characters, I could just pick him up and run around in the back and like grab one of the other puppeteers and say like, grab a chicken and let's see what this relationship's going to be like or something. Or, <laughs> uh, and every time David was there, who does Cookie Monster, he wasn't there the whole time. Every time he'd come in, mm -hmm. we just realized they were funny. They, mm -hmm. they they look funny together. They have these attitudes that are funny together and shouty and like confused. And it's just an odd couple thing. Uh, like it wasn't preempted. We just enjoyed playing with each other and doing the ad libs and stuff. And other people around noticed it. Like the camp, you see the camera guys going, "Ah, oh, oh, this will be funny. I'm sure this will be funny." Or if not, like it'll be odd. It'll be weird. Something, something will happen here <laughs> that's enjoyable. Uh, yeah. So it gave me the confidence to like develop it up and pitch the foodie truck. That's brilliant. That's so cool. So, so you pitched the foodie truck. Yeah. So whilst we're on the Furchester Hotel, like it was coming to an end. And I'm like, oh, no, this is my favourite thing ever. <laughs> you know, like, I don't want it to end. Uh, it's like when you go to Disneyland and you have to leave. <laughs> so I'm like, well, how do I keep this with me? How do I keep it in my life? So that's when I was like, well, Cooking Gonga could do Uber Eats from the hotel. Uh, you know, because it's a, an easier, cheaper way of, of continuing it without having the whole hotel set and everything. Mm. And so... Uh, they, the original idea was that they would cook from the hotel and they'd send the food out via a bird. They'd like strap it to a bird and send the bird off. And then uh, oh, there was a food there was a food truck element to it actually. 
because there was a food truck outside the studio and I gave the guy 50 quid and I was like, if I can shoot in your in your food truck for an hour this morning, I'll give you 50 quid. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and, and we shot a pilot on iPhones. We were, I wrote and we shot a pilot on iPhones and stuff. Basically, what's in Sesame Street now is very close to, to apart from the bird bit, is very close to that mm. pilot, which was just on iPhones and a little bit of stop motion. And when I say stop motion, it's like a piece of flat paper and some cutouts. <laughs> there was nothing <laughs> high tech at all. Um, but yeah. I mean, that moment when, I mean, because oh, I got, there's so much I want to ask you about. Like, I mean, Jade, oh, sorry, Jade brought up a, a really interesting point. Obviously, when you were working on Muppets Most Wanted, mm. That actually, Jade, you ask this question, you can do it instead. <laughs> well, I was watching your um, behind the scenes videos that you shot on Muppets Most Wanted because oh, yeah. I was just, so I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. It is cool. Like, it's it's cooler. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. I literally can't imagine. But one of the things, obviously, for us doing a Muppet Show podcast, mm. for Muppets Most Wanted, they recreated the Muppet Show opening as so good. Die Muppets and El Muppet Show. Yeah. And you have footage of them recreating that. Yeah. And I was just wondering, what was that like? Because I think I'd have actually fainted mm-hmm. watching them Well, recreate. just as a disclaimer, it's not my footage. That's Disney's footage okay. from the okay. from the B-roll and the, and the Blu-rays. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get sued. <laughs> I have no Thank personal Thank you, Walt Disney Company. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. Yeah, Thank you very much. Um, it was in- it's insane. Like, you know, The Muppet Show is my favourite thing. It's my absolute favorite thing. I think about it all the time. I'm insane. It's my favorite. I can't tell you how much I love it. It's my absolute favorite thing. And so when we first walked into the the stage, it's one of the stages way at the back of Pinewood, and they had created the Muppet Theatre. It's mind-blowing. Absolutely yeah. mind-blowing. Because I never thought, I, like, I was like, yeah, we're working on a Muppet movie, but I didn't think we'd be seeing the Muppet Theatre. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like the arches. It was the, when, I, when we got to do the arches, that's when I was like, I'm in it. <laughs> um, That's like how, a religious how did I get yeah, like it? Yeah, out-of-body experience. <laughs> yeah, and like the pink, you know, the pink paint and the bright lights and mm-hmm. the pillars and yeah. stuff. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my Christ, you're in it. How, like, how did you do this? Yeah. Did you get to puppeteer in the arches? Yeah, loads. I have a list. I should, oh, I should have pulled up the list. Um, Because, so those, um the arches, lots of the characters are actually shot individually. Mm-hmm. Like on the Muppet Show, um, I have pictures of them and they shot those and they would come in in rows. So you do like a row each time. But in the movies, they were done individually because we can do green screen easier now and stuff mm-hmm. like that. They can come in. So I did lots. Um, oh man, I wish I could remember who. Droop. I remember that. <gasps> that Spanish. I always remember that Spanish whatnot that's in like a flamenco outfit. Oh. Um, we did loads. I was doing Dr. Teeth's hands in <laughs> one of them. Oh. I'm trying to think of like the, the moments. But there was just a whole row of puppets and you got to get for all of them. And mm-hmm. then um, and then I was in, what was I doing in that? Uh, I think I was assisting Miss Piggy in the in the, in that middle line. You know, the, the, mm-hmm. the important line, Kermit, Fozzie, Piggy. I think I was just assisting Piggy with the rod, with her rods in that. I'm definitely the, in there. Um. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, you it, made it to the middle insane. line of the Muppet Show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's insane. Oh, and I was Beaker in in one of those in the in the male line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I mean, he's he's hardly in it. He's in it for a couple of frames because he's like the first one in, so he's quickly the first yeah. one out. But you know, the, there's like the male row of characters mm-hmm. yeah. and Beaker in there. Oh my god! So, so Beaker is crazy. my spirit animal. Like, <laughs> <I know. laughs> like he's. <laughs> just so oh nuts God. you don't expect to recreate something like that that you're so into yeah. like you, you, you think yeah i might get involved in with those things and i'll probably be around them at some point you know and like you might get to know them but you don't expect to like actually re- and be looking at the original thing on a laptop seconds before to try and match it mm. like that's insane that's an- another level of insane isn't it yeah I can't even, I can't, the, the closest equivalent I can think to me is, as well as a big Muppet fan, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. Mm. And I think there's a, quite a few people who talk about when you sort of step onto the TARDIS, yeah. you know, that kind of feeling of like, oh shit, I'm actually, this is actually happening now. Yeah, you and, fell in the TV. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> yeah. in the television and you've done it. And you're, not only that, you're making money. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, well, I've done it a couple of times now because the same thing happened on Dark Crystal when we walked onto the... Dark Crystal series oh, when we walked yeah. onto the Crystal Chamber set, you know, with the with the Crystal Hangs. I don't know if you know that mm-hmm. movie. Mm. Um, when we walked up onto that, that was such a great set. 
it's like raised. All the puppet sets are raised about four foot in the air so that we can stand up mm. um, straight with the puppets above our heads. That's nice of um, them. So you're nice not like... So we're not lying like down, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to walk up the steps and you kind of walk into that crystal set. And I was with Neil Sterenberg who performed Rianne in that. And he was on the Furchester Hotel too. He's a puppet builder and puppeteer. Mm. And, um, and we had like tears in our eyes because that was... It was like a 360 set. So you were in it. Mm. You were actually in it. Whereas like oh, the Muppet Show set, it was obviously facing out to the cameras and, and the crew and stuff. Yeah. But when you're in it, that's quite insane. And Sesame Street too. Like, I don't know how I managed to get to, to go and wander down all these brilliant sets that I adore. I feel like we could talk to you, like just ask you questions for hours, but I'm aware we do also have to go on to <laughs> the episode that we're here to chat about. But I have two more questions. Mm-hmm. One, Although I'd like to ask about Sesame Street, maybe we'll just ask you back for another episode. We'll yeah. chat about okay, that another fine. time. I want to know what it's like being a puppeteer in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yes. <laughs> like, where, where are you in the float? How cold are you? Do you can you see anything apart from just your like? Do you know what I mean? Like, you've just, do you like, get a I'm break aware as well, or do you have to do it for like three hours? Um, <laughs> How does no, that no work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a long old stretch, but you can you can. Yeah. So I'll start with like, is it cold? Hell yes, it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> because the wind is howling down those streets. Uh, and like if you've been to New York in the winter, you know it's cold. It, like it's cutting in there. Yeah. So you have to wear so many layers. And then obviously like your circulation cuts off. Um, and you've got those things, you know, those little pads, those heat pads. Mm. Yeah. They're for shoes or something. Or they're for gloves. But like we put them in our shoes. It's something weird was going on there. People were putting them everywhere because it's so cold. <laughs> and like you're just in a Swiss cheese box, basically. So the wind is just whistling through. Um, you can see through because there are these like black gauzes. So when you've got your mm-hmm. puppet hanging out, the gong has been out like the top window, the top, the top tier of 123 Sesame Street, the apartment at the top. I don't know who lives up there, but we, we gate crash it. <laughs> um, <laughs> who lives up there? Oh, I don't know. That's enough for another time. <laughs> but, Somebody um, will know. Let us, whoever knows that's let listening. Let me know. Let us know who lives yeah. up there. <laughs> Maybe it's empty. Maybe I could rent it. Um, so, yeah, I've been out the top window. prime real estate at this point. <laughs> you should expensive. be so lucky. Unless that's rent. I don't know if Sesame Street has rent control or not. <laughs> I imagine it doesn't. <laughs> um, and then, like... Well, since HBO got involved. They're like, oh, that's, <laughs> there's money to be made. <laughs> So when you, when you get on the float, you go through the door of Hooper's store and then you go up a ladder mm. on the inside and it's just all black inside because they don't want anything to reflect from within. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And you're behind black gauzes with the puppets out the window. And yeah, you stay up the whole time. It's, it's a long time, but it's great. Like, there's no other buzz like it. It's thousands of people yeah, on all levels. Because like in England, I feel mm. like if we had that, everybody would be on street level. Yeah. But like as you go down uh, Broadway and stuff, people are on all the levels. They're in the yeah. windows and they're up above. Yeah, there's little Mara Wilson from Miracle on 34th Street just watching from her window. <laughs> <laughs> and like they're they're on your eye line, yeah. even though you're kind of two stories up. So it's quite funny. And then um, my family came once, and we're at Bryant Park, and uh, and Alan, who is Alan on Sesame Street. That one of the human characters, he's like, there's Warwick's family. <laughs> so I just like, pulled my head out the window and was waving out the window. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so good. That's so that's brilliant. So cool. <laughs> it's but like that again. It's another insane situation that you don't expect to get yourself into. Mm-hmm. I'd always heard of it and seen it and was like, wow, that's cool. I, maybe I'll go and watch one time. And then when, it, when the opportunity came up, I was like, of course I'll be there. Um. <laughs> Yeah, the last time I did it, I was like in and out within 20 hours or something. Like I just flew in for that. Oof, Jesus. And then they're like, you're insane. You're going to be on TV for 20 seconds. But I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm definitely doing it. Nothing will stop me. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Like, yeah. yeah. And Diana Ross was in one of those with us. Not, oh, not with us, oh. but like ahead of us or behind us somewhere. She was there. Why did they put her behind gauze? That seems mean. <laughs> <laughs> she would bust out of that, Lewis. I saw she her earlier would. this year. And let me tell you, there is nothing that would stop her nothing from getting in the spotlight. Her. Where did you see her? Uh, I saw her at the O2. It was oh, amazing. Cool. I had tickets. I had tickets, but I was at Glastonbury. Oh, because it but changed. you saw it at Glastow then? I saw it at Glastow, but you know, because yeah. did you buy the tickets the first time round? Yeah, so they were a Christmas present from my parents in uh, 2019, yeah, ages I ago. think. Yeah, absolutely forever ago. Yeah. yeah. I was so good. Like, this is such a tangent, but um, I've been tracking her coming over here. Literally, I just missed her the last time she came over, which I think was in uh, 2007. I missed it mm. by like a week. And then since then, I've been like 
every six months I'm like, is she coming? Is she coming? Is she coming? And I'm having to wait because of the pandemic. I was like, oh my God, please let her still be alive. Like, please do not <laughs> let her still <laughs> fail. <laughs> but it's fine. I've seen her now. It's all good. So yeah, she good. was amazing. Oh, she was so good, wasn't she? <laughs> yes, she um, was great. <laughs> actually, on the BBC footage, you know, like the BBC, mm. I play whatever it is, I'm in it. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> Dancing to Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Oh. Just having the time of my life. <laughs> yeah. so my, my boyfriend went to Glastonbury this year and uh, he went and saw uh, Casey Musgraves. Oh yeah, me too. He was, yeah, and lo- she was great. And I was watching it from home because I don't do camping. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> but uh, he was like, oh my God, I saw myself on the footage. Like, did you not see me? And I was like, what? And then he shows me, like, the picture he took of himself. Yeah, yeah, the big screens. It's literally just glasses, hair, <laughs> like, oh. sunglasses, there, like, no other discerning features. Like, it's literally <laughs> like, the little bottom, bottom left of the screen. I was like, yeah, funnily, I didn't catch that one. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I had somebody funny. on my shoulders, so it was easy to, oh, to spot. Nice. We were like, ah, I mean, but one of them was a, like, it was kind of like a tight shot. It was great. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm like, do I get paid for that? Yeah, <laughs> so there's some royalties due, I'm sure. <laughs> Warwick, we should probably jump onto the mm. actual episode just so we can uh, get through the whole thing with you. Um, I suppose we should ask the last question. What made you choose the Julie Andrews episode? I adore Julie Andrews. Who she's doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? How could you not? I love her to bits. She's she's brilliant, isn't she? She's uh, great. She's I'd love a- to marry her. <laughs> I'm too young. <laughs> <laughs> we we did the Hollywood tour, um, bus, celebrity house tour, mm. whatever you call it, years ago. And we, we went past her house. And I'm like, of course, that's Julie Andrews. House. Look at the beautiful flowers in the garden. <laughs> it's just like the perfect house. I oh love her. She's great. I just I've always loved her. Trap house. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, my uncle uh, said a couple of years ago. He was like, "Oh yeah, I remember you were sweet on Julie Andrews when you were like six. <laughs> <laughs> Still am. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> Still am. Yeah, consistently sweet. <laughs> have you ever? Have you ever seen her? I know Emma has. No, I'd love. Oh no, I did. At the um, it was a talk though. Yeah, that's what she did. Her book tour. Say. Yes, I saw you her. Saw it. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the um, at the South Did Bank. she do Edelweiss at the end when you saw it? No. Oh, she oh. did like Edel, kind of like oh, sing, no. speak Edelweiss, and I was literally like crying. I was like Edelweiss. <laughs> oh no, she didn't do that when I was there. Ah, oh, I don't like her anymore. <laughs> That's why. So when you said, "Have you seen her?" I'm like, "Have you?" I thought, "Have you seen her sing?" Oh. Oh, no. No. Well, no. well, I think Emma's probably one That's of the great. people younger than I don't even know. Yes, yeah. <laughs> she brought down the that. mean average of that audience. For that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I should add though, my my headphones just came on. By the way, very, oh, very very loud. Oh, good. Sorry. Well, that's great. I'm glad you got it. You were doing very well answering those questions, not being able to hear us. You were very, you were really on point. <laughs> I should add that uh, that was one of the episodes that we taped. So that's why I, I love it so much because we had like six Muppet Show episodes on tape from the original, oh. from the repeats. So that's why I kind of love it because I saw it all the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jade, mm. why don't you kick us off with a little bit of production information for this episode? I will. So this episode, this is amazing to me. This was a Christmas Day episode in the UK. It broadcast on the 25th of December, 1977. So that means you could watch Sound of Music and then presumably watch Julie Andrews on The Muppet Show <laughs> afterwards, which I don't know about you, but that sounds like a perfect Christmas. Perfect day, yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was written by Jerry Jewell, Joseph A. Bailey, Jim Henson and Don Hinckley and directed by Peter Harris. And Emma... <laughs> I can't wait to hear what uh, gems you've pulled out about Julie Andrews. <laughs> Emma, you almost did like a slightly Julie Andrews-ish kind of, oh, like she, she, loves, yes. she loves just putting her hand on her head like that. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Keep it. Remember, Emma, we do have to talk about the Muppets. <laughs> like, so don't I know, I know. Well, I was like, but we would like much. to hear this information. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much to say. Okay, so. Dame Julie Andrews has had a 70 plus year career. She's known for her work on stage and on screen. She's basically part of the fabric of life. (laughs) Okay, all right. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) keep going. She's been around for so long. Um, I found quite an interesting fact actually about her, which I'm not sure if a lot of people know. Apparently, 
uh, her school closed, obviously, due to World War Two, And because of that, that's how her stepfather first got her into singing lessons mm-hmm. to basically, you know, because she had this free time. And then obviously that's when they discovered her voice, which was obviously soprano with the four octave range, which is absolutely insane for mm. obviously a girl her age. And she started off in music hall, pantomimes, uh, radio. And then at the age of 13, she uh, performed at the Royal Variety Show um, in front of King George. Um, And then basically she did a lot of different shows um, in the West End. And then she got offered uh, the boyfriend on Broadway when she was 18. And she finally agreed to go and she signed up for a one year contract. And then during that time, um, she basically got offered My Fair Lady and she said she was able to do it because she wasn't tied into a two-year contract, which again is amazing. Yeah. Obviously, My Fair Lady just blew up, like exploded and it was Broadway, London. And then uh, she did Cinderella uh, on TV in America and um, apparently that reached an audience of over 100 million people, which is crazy it, i believe it held the record for like the highest viewing figures yeah. in the u.s mm. for about for a genuinely like several decades like mm. yeah yeah um and then from there she went into camelot and then as we know mr walt disney came to see her to talk to her about a certain little film called mary poppins and also what i think is amazing about this as well and she said it herself she was pregnant with her daughter and he said he would wait for her Unreal, like especially at that time. Mm -hmm. Plays Mary Poppins, wins the Best Actress Oscar in 1964. Beating Audrey Hepburn, who had stolen her part because because of Jack (laughs) Warner. And it just just went from there. And obviously, like we said, Sound of Music, so many iconic films. And then obviously she met her second husband, Blake Edwards, and they had their like 40-year marriage and creative partnership with all the films they made. She did TV shows. She had her own show. She did shows with Carol Burnett. I mean, she's won an Oscar, a BAFTA, an Emmy, a Golden Globe. Funnily enough, she hasn't actually won a Tony. So oh, she hasn't mad. adopted yet, which is madness. What? Um, and then she became a dame in the year 2000. And then apparently at that same ceremony was Elizabeth Taylor. I would have loved to have been there oh, for that. That would have been God. amazing. <laughs> And then sort of she's done books and now she does a lot of like voiceover work. She's been in Princess Diaries, you know, Despicable Me, Shrek. Um, She's narrating Bridgerton at the moment. Um, She's kind of done her two memoirs. So, yeah. And everywhere. Julie's Playroom. (laughs) Julie's Playroom. Yeah. Green Room. Green Room. Green Room. Sorry. I knew it was something. (laughs) (laughs) Playroom. Playroom is the next series. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot it was in a theatre. I mean, Julie Andrews is just, I mean, I don't remember a time in my life where I didn't know who Julie Andrews was. Mm. Mary Poppins is just like such a, I mean, this is not special or unique in any way, but just like such a sort of joyful, sort of perfect film that just like imprints on you as a child. And she's just, it's incredible that that's her first screen role because she's just perfect in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's so all good. I have to say. <laughs> so, just drink it in. So good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it's just crazy how many generations have obviously grown up with her very, very much a part of their lives mm. and in these classic roles. And then the fact that she's also been able to continue that with things like Princess Diaries and Despicable Me and stuff as well. Like, it's just a continuation yeah. that I think is going to be really... Well, yeah, not. I'm obviously don't not wishing it. her oh, dead God, at all. Don't but like, Emma, kill, Emma killed the queen like two episodes ago. <laughs> I act, like genuinely, stop. it was nuts. Stop you doing can't, that. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop doing that, Emma. Stop killing the queen. <laughs> We need to like I don't know yeah. put her in a like I don't know like a shoebox like a blue Peter tortoise and just like keep her safe. What for, the like, queen? Like <laughs> like six months of the year. No, just like protect her, put her into hibernation, and just bring her out in the summer months and be like, oh, have a nice time. And then back in the box. Make another Minions movie and then get back in the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just ah, it's Julie Andrews with a thick <laughs> Eastern European accent. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, it's worth saying that she worked with the Muppets loads. Yes. Yeah. She Ma- did. Like maybe more than any other Muppet Show guest star. I think she's basically an honorary Muppet. Yeah. And like when she says that when she's talking to Kermit, you know that she's really talking to her friend. It's yeah. not just lines. Like... They have got some, I mean, I don't know what the chemistry is. Like, it's not like the kind of sexual chemistry of Animal and Rita Moreno. But there is, <laughs> no. I don't know, there's that lingering shot after the ballad in the dressing room. <laughs> like, they're, they're just, she looks to the camera and she looks back. And we hold on it for quite a long time to yeah. the point where I was like, I feel slightly uncomfortable I literally now. wrote, like, Kermit loves Julie. And I was like, Jim loves Julie as yeah. well. Yeah. We all love Julie. All but love that, Julie. that... I mean, we're jumping ahead, but that look to the camera, you know, that sweet, yeah. sickly sweet yeah. <laughs> look to the camera. <laughs> Anybody else on the planet, I'd be going, Ugh! Yeah. Not Julie. <laughs> you can't. She's allowed. She is. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it just comes so naturally to her as well. It's just, there is something about her energy that, because I mean, I've I've seen some of her, like, those kind of like later films that she does that are kind of like, you know, like, Victor Victoria or I've seen clips Mm. of her doing like should I leave you from follies and it's so weird that actually the thing that I feel never quite sits right in her is kind of like resentful anger like she can be frustrated like or like exasperated but somehow Mm. like there is just something about the the, the energy of Julie Andrews that like you could never see her being actually spiteful so like anytime I've sort of seen her try and play something really spiteful I'm always like Oh, don't be silly! Like, you know, like, not <laughs> like, I wonder if that's a potentially frustrating thing to be trapped in. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it's also worth pointing out that I think she's quite important in Muppet history because she had her series, The Julie Andrews Hour, mm. which was an uh, or ATV ITC Lou Grade series that was on in the states, and it wasn't doing very well in the ratings. It was up against Mary Tyler Moore at one point. I mean, it moved around loads. And it was up against Mary Tyler Moore. And that's when I think they decided, okay, let's call it a day. But she had time left on her contract. Mm. So they gave her five specials. And one of those specials was the Julie Andrews on Sesame Street, which then shot the five specials were to be made over here in England because it didn't go too well over there, right, mm. in the States. So they came here and they made Julie Andrews on Sesame Street, which is an hour-long uh, Sesame Street primetime special, which is the most Muppet show Sesame Street's ever been. It's well worth a watch. They built, rebuilt Sesame Street at L Street Studios. Wow. Brick by brick. Oh, wow. <laughs> like the whole thing, the whole street, and then some. They added bits on, like a, they put a bridge in and stuff like this. Um, but it's a very Muppet show. It's Parts of it are set in a theatre. Like, you know, there's a Broadway medley and stuff. And so Jim came with all the Muppets and the Muppet guys and was there at L Street Studios in 73 with Lou Grade. So, I mean, it must be that Lou saw them and was like, okay, these guys are good. We're making a show with them. They should have a series. So I think it's quite. She's quite an important That's part so of that. In. Her failure yes. with the Julie Andrews Hour. <laughs> so we need to thank uh, Hitler for for getting uh, Julie Andrews into singing lessons, and we need to thank Mary oh. Tyler Moore for uh, the sort of, uh, <laughs> being the successful. Show. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? it is um, like the Muppets had been here before. They were on the Tom Jones show, mm. uh, which I think was another Lou Gray show, uh, like in 1970 or something. Mm. But this was the first time that they had been in, in England and were like, ta-da, look at what we can put on. Um, That's so, so like three years later, or four, two, sorry, they would have been back four making years the later, pilots yeah. for the Muppet Show. Yeah. Yeah. God, that's nuts. I mean, as we see literally from the opening titles, Kermit is incredibly excited. Like the second he bursts through, he's like, it's never that excited like, about <laughs> anybody else. Like, it's, he's, he is about to fall out of the O. He's so excited, I think. Yeah. And I love, I mean, obviously we get the little gag with Gonzo with his little light up trumpet. Again, is, <laughs> yeah. it, is, it the right, is that the right puppet? Like, do you not? It is now. It is now. Yeah, I think like, so. After last yeah. week, yeah. I got slightly uh, thrown. Oh, because there's one, what was last week's? Last week's was uh, Cleo Lane. Yeah, and, and it's and the, the old... there was an old one in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's an old yeah. Gonzo. Is it because he it's flies really out or something? Or he blows the up? Trumpet something trumpet flies out. Yeah. Trumpet flies out. That yeah. is a good memory. That is, that <laughs> recall, like, that's like my sort of Simpsons level recall. Where it's like, just because I watch repeats a hundred times in like the part where my brain's a sponge. Like, that's impressive. I'm very impressed. Well, it that. happens again. <laughs> that old Gonzo comes back again. Ah. At some point. Okay. Um, Linda Carter episode, maybe. Have you done that? You've done that already? No? No, no that's, that's to come. Hasn't come up yet. No, that's still to come. There's like explosions, so they put the old puppet in so that he doesn't get blown up or something. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah. But like, it's so different, isn't it? That old puppet's yeah. so different. It's Dave so... Gold's rebuilt that puppet. Mm-mm. Yeah. Who Dave Gold's performs Gonzo, and he re- mm. rebuilt Gonzo. You know this, I know. Sorry. No, it's uh, all right. The no, Iron no, Mech and no. stuff, and like just refining the puppet that Jim had made back in the early seventies. Uh, so I find it weird when they think they c- you c- you can cut between the two. Yeah. <laughs> you no, can't. you definitely can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, the new the the new Gonzo is so much more expressive and just happier. It just looks like a, <laughs> it kind of looks like a different person. Yeah, yeah it does. it's like same species. He, he went away for the like summer break and got some work done. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, came back like plumped up. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean they waste no time. They jump. I mean. Kermit runs on and then it's like, right, we've got Julie, so we're going to do as much as we can, so let's go. And we Get on go, with it. We go straight into a lonely goat herd. Uh, oh, yeah. Which is, it's just camp nonsense. And what I was he going to say? Oh, I think it's positive good. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, no. I, like, loved it. Like, it's, uh, you know, an Oktoberfest meets, I don't know, It's a Small World meets, you know, a regional yeah, know. production of The Sound of Music, but the actually small, got Julie Andrews in it. it. High on a hill was a lonely goat herd. Lady, old lady, old lady, oh. Loud was the voice of the lonely goat herd. Lady, old lady, old lady, oh. Folks in a town that was quite remote herd. Lady, old lady, old lady, oh. Lusty and clear from the goat herd's throat herd. Lady, old lady, old lady, oh. I have zero negative things to say about it, this whole episode. Good, that's fine. <laughs> but like, but the the scale of this always in my head, I'm like, what? Wait, who? Where? What? Yeah. She's so big. <laughs> I know. When she's crouching down in front of the like, I was going to say ski chalet, but whatever it is, it's like she wouldn't even be able to fit through that door. Like, oh, like yeah. she's like the same height as the whole building. Like, yeah. Fitting through that door. I mean, it literally when she goes to sit down at the end, I was like, hold on, wait a second. They've not thought about this perspective at yeah. all. Yeah. You're not coming in. Yeah. And and just that. All of the staging is very strange because obviously they weren't working, I'm guessing, on the biggest set. So you've got the goat herd is away in the distance, but it's clearly not actually that far away. <laughs> like then Julie could do... reach him probably from yeah, where yeah. she was standing. <laughs> <laughs> she probably just needs to like hold out one finger and can be like, yes, yeah, <laughs> nice and fluffy. Um, and yeah, then you've got like the Alpine Lodge in the foreground. Alpine Lodge, And then you have those shots sort of back. <laughs> And then when you get Annie Sue come in in her little pink coat, and you're like, where's this bit of the stage come from? I mean, it's just... And Kermit's up in the castle. And Kermit's up in... Which is not which is really like anywhere, high. I don't think. There... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that um that that building, I don't know, what is it? A pub? I don't know. The, yeah, the like lodge like thing. The wood, the wood thing. Yeah, yeah. That They use that again. Um, I think it's in that song good Upadi? Upada? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Uh, so I don't know I if do. that's I don't know if that's been or to come yet. So I wonder if they we have that. We haven't had it yet. Oh, we haven't had it. So it's been no. u- they this this was first and then they shot that. Yeah. Right. Because I was thinking, oh, did they have this beautiful set piece? And they're like, we must we must bring. <laughs> we it need to in find another excuse for this ski lodge that we've <laughs> <Yeah>. built. <laughs> and then, uh, but like, part of me was thinking, are they thinking that in the movie uh, that it's a puppet set, isn't it? So are, yeah. is that why it's scaled down? Mm. I don't know. I think they just Maybe built not it for the puppets and then it. they were just like, oh God, now we want Julie to interact with it. And mm. they obviously did think about it in the sense of like, oh, we'll get her to sit down. because <laughs> so, <laughs> she so does she sit? Up. She sits in front of it, does she? she like yeah, she sits on the, yeah. Yeah. on the steps. Yeah. Because you can see that, um, you know, the end of that, you can see that Frank Oz is performing Annie Sue down there. And you can see him in the bottom of the frame, bottom uh, right, I think. Oh. He's on a like an office chair on wheels. <laughs> you can't see that. Obviously, you can't see that. I've seen that in pictures. <laughs> but you can see that he's like stretching out and he can't go any further. And he's just resting there. I suppose on the old monitors, you wouldn't see that far. You wouldn't see that far into the edge of the frame. Mm-hmm. I suppose not. Mm-hmm. That's like sometimes when you see their heads, they just wouldn't have seen that at the bottom of frame because their scan would be different. They're on tiny little black and white monitors. Mm. Interesting. That is interesting. Also, Miss Mousy's in there. Yeah. Back from the dead. <laughs> she's <laughs> Yeah, she's back. <laughs> she comes back with a vengeance in this episode. She does. <laughs> now, I was briefly thrown for a second because the pig that shows up in the sort of blonde afro is the most mm. Miss Piggy like pig that we've seen in those kind of background pigs. But it isn't Piggy. 
That's Annie, Annie Sue. Sue. Oh, we sorry. have met her. Oh my god, my brain is. Annie Sue, Piggy's rival. That's right. Louise, Go- Louise Gold performs Annie Sue. She's the sweet little pig that Kermit is kind of sweet on. Oh um, my so god, yeah, Piggy now hates I remember. Her. Yeah, okay. She she was introduced in the Leo Sayer episode. We haven't got there oh. yet. Oh. Um, she's been in. She's been in one episode so mm. far where she was just singing. We haven't yeah. actually got to any of the story. Okay, cool. I feel yet. less worried. Which is now, why you I was like, like, yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's to come. So I don't yeah. think I would have blocked she... out an entire Leo Sayer. Well, I might do. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of strange that it's Annie Sue, not Miss Piggy. Mm. Maybe they were shot out of sequence. Maybe that was shot mm. first, but they yeah. aired differently. Mm. Possibly. Because uh, that happens. I did notice that the production on this was late November, just before the December. So maybe it was literally like the last thing they shot. So maybe they had already started the Annie Sue storyline, yeah. you know, in earlier productions, even mm. if the episodes yeah. aired later. Well, the same happened with Scooter in series one, where I think mm. he's in, he like, he is introduced in episode six or something. But like, we see him for episode one. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, we had a big debate when we were when we first started this uh, podcast because uh, Disney Plus put them up in which order they did they first upload them I all. I think in? they were originally in production order, and then, and then they changed it a to week like, later the, like, after we'd recorded three order. episodes. They then swapped oh. it to a different order, and we so the official, like, which is like the New York airing order. Yeah, yeah so it's like yeah. Rita Moreno first, and then yeah, wait, yeah. is that oh god, I can't, yes. yeah. yeah, and it was just yeah. something like oh crap, we need to go back and do this again. Uh, I mean, it was actually, it was kind of, it worked out all right. Interesting, though, that you would do that. I suppose they probably wanted to put her out on Christmas Day. Yeah, I mean, it's it makes sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> Julie yeah. Andrews does sort of scream Christmas in a way. Yeah, national treasure, get her on Christmas Day. Yeah. What's also worth saying is, and I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty certain that one of these bits was switched out for a Christmas bit oh. when it aired originally on that Christmas Day. Um, mm. Like, you might have seen, like, a Radio Times or something, a TV Times with the picture of her and the Muppets, and they've got tinsel around them. Oh, yeah. So there were some, I'm like, 99.9%, I will crack this one day. <laughs> <laughs> there, there there, was a bit taken out, and then, like, a Christmas carol bit put in. Oh. Mm. But oh, my. who knows if we'll ever see that again. Somebody had to be recording on that day. Yeah, Because yeah, it's, like, the only time it. it goes out. Oh, I've been hounding this for years. Has it. <laughs> I've, I've been at this for years and like everybody i've asked all the people who were there nobody nobody knows anything about it that it happened i know <laughs> i will Emma, find evidence as our julia aficionado how was this sort of entire sketch experience for you what, did you enjoy the slightly like parping percussion that's in the back of this one that feels a little <laughs> bit like thin and sort of like it's a bit like <laughs> Yeah, no, I thought it was really sweet. It was great. I did think, like we were saying, that it seemed like a kind of regional tour version of Sound of Music. <laughs> well, they've only got like five Von Trapp kids because they can't yeah, afford Yeah, but I thought Julie did really, really well. I just, oh God, I love her so much. Yeah. She was just really, really great. And I just thought all her interactions with all of the Muppets um, was really, really good. And um, her just expression and everything is just so great she's got such great cheekbones like they're really good like she's got great hair too yeah i was trying to work out what the hair color was in this one because it's like brunette but with like ashy yeah flex of blonde through i was like that's cool there is one thing that has always struck me as bizarre it's when they cut from her like tiptoeing in on those little steps stones Mm. and then they cut straight in to a tighter shot and the chickens come in and and I never think about, like, how long are Rizzo's legs? You know, like, why does he have four foot legs or anything? Yeah. I, I don't think about that any at, at all. But when you cut so quickly from a, a, sh- a wide shot where you can see her feet and stuff into the waist height shot and the chickens come in, you're like, where are, the, are these chickens floating? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> how long are their legs? Because yeah. it's so quick. It's always, that's, it's always that kind of, like, odd thing. In partic- I feel like it's particularly in, like, Muppet movies where they then want to have those shots of, like, Muppets standing shot. on the ground or walking yeah, in and you yeah. suddenly go like, why are they suddenly like all at knee level? <laughs> like it's so yeah, strange when yeah, otherwise yeah. people are talking pretty much sort of like eye height to eye height. Like yeah. you can't ever sort of um, think about it too much. Otherwise it kind of breaks no. your brain. Yeah, you have to avoid those shots. Those shots that are so soon. Yeah. From, yeah. from a wide to a, to a close. Yeah. yeah, they probably would have got away with it if it had cut to the goat herd or to the inn or something Definitely. and then cut back. Yeah. But yeah, I think there was some weird... In this and also the um, 
the final number, which obviously we'll get to eventually. But there were some weird camera setups and choices in both mm. of them. Um, mm. And I just don't know whether they were just so excited to have Julie kind of prancing about <laughs> that they kind of forgot that like they needed to make it work for the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, who cares about them? <laughs> Whatever yeah. Julie wants. Yeah, exactly. Everybody will be like that. Whatever you want. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Six foot chickens, of course. Yeah. <laughs> they exist. Yeah. <laughs> well, we go from six foot chickens to a real life human. I'm sorry, a real life human. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. A real life. I was going to say a real life human cow. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> So. Oh, fine. Keep it in. I don't care. Like, so we go from a big chicken <laughs> to a big real cow just sort of chilling out backstage. And this is our runner for the entire episode, just mm-hmm. trying to work out who the cow belongs to. Yeah. What do we and think like, of this that, as a runner? Well, this is a, this as a puppeteer who works on those kind of sets. This is a dangerous situation because yeah. the the backstage set starts four feet off the ground. It's just like above waist height to to us humans. Uh, so there's a cow up there stood on that <laughs> next to you with horns. Yeah. Next to your head. Next, next to your head. Like, next to, I assume, some sort of like, you know, a drop that they could just fall yeah, yeah. into. Yeah, a four foot drop in front and to the side, I would imagine. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so, so scary. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, again. I wouldn't want to be doing that. Much, <laughs> much like most of the other animals, like the real life animals we've seen on the show, <laughs> it seems a very docile cow which again, always makes me think like these animals have been like 1970s dosed up in some way like they've <laughs> oh, been God, given no. a valium like cracked up in their feed or something because they're always just so sleepy and they yeah. do nothing <laughs> yeah i mean cows are pretty sleepy anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah but and i don't think it's go- i don't think it can go anywhere i, I honestly think it can't walk away i yeah. don't think it can walk forward um I've never seen pictures of how it could walk forward. Like, you know, I've seen lots of photos of behind the scenes of that yeah. set and there's nowhere to go there. <laughs> You're just going down. It was probably scared for its life. <laughs> for its life, yeah. <laughs> Surrounded by all these weird sort of like almost animal but not quite things. Yeah. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> it probably looked down at its hooves and saw that yeah it literally could move and it's like i am not moving for the rest of yeah. my life this is it this is where i live now <laughs> it does look like a very healthy cow it does. I, don't, it does I don't see those kind of cows i'm in the city in london i don't see those kind of cows around here no. <laughs> kermit made a joke about jersey and i'm not sure if it is a jersey cow oh maybe yeah it shipped it, it over it looks like the cows you get on the adverts for butter yeah, yeah exactly that's what i was thinking mm. Which just maybe means we've all been taken in by the advertising, but yeah. it's actually uh, it's a pro- it's actually a professional cow. It's an acting yeah. cow. <laughs> like that's what we do, right? aren't we all? <laughs> 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 oh god! <laughs> yeah, um, it's actually got yeah some gorgeous eight by tens. Like there's one of just the cow, and then one where it's wearing like a little sailor hat, and another one where it's like wearing a turtleneck. Uh, well, it gets one at the end with Gonzo. That's like Where, why like is it wearing old. a hat at the end? It's so weird. Because <laughs> it's going on a date, Lewis. It's all dressed up. <laughs> it's like a driving Miss Daisy hat. Like it's just such a weird choice. Oh. Um, I think the runner's fine. It's quite fun, but I feel like some of the jokes that they made around it could have probably been a little bit sharper than they were like making jokes about not needing milk money anymore and things it's just a bit like okay. i know i just suddenly like my like i literally just woke up and watched this episode so like that suddenly my brain was like oh god does that mean scooter's just gonna be like suckling at this man, like this cow just like, I was like his uncle owns a theater he'll do whatever he likes <laughs> <laughs> his, his uncle would not be happy with like some cow like tr- like tracking its way through. Oh, God. So we go from the cow backstage to Muppets news flash with your favourite Muppet newsman. He's a very handsome man, and it's kind of like this whole uh, sports equipment joke where they're going to be falling from an aeroplane, and you're like, okay, so I can see what's going to happen now. And then there's suddenly there's a big drop and like 10,000 ping pong balls kind of fall I mean, onto I him. I think it's 100 at most. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And then obviously then there's the bowling ball as well, yeah. which just kind of like clunks him on the head. Mm-hmm. So The only thing I could think when I watched it was obviously it's all done in one shot. They drop the however many ping pong balls and then the bowling ball does hit him 
bang square on mm. the head. And I was like, mm. oh God, how many times did that take where you then have to scoot around and pick up a hundred ping pong balls because you <laughs> missed yeah, his yeah. head with the bowling ball? Like, <laughs> Warwick, have you ever been in like a sort of, has there ever been a, like a take or a thing that you've been trying to film where it's like one particular thing needs to happen with yeah. the puppets mm-hmm. and it's just... I, how much of a nightmare you get caught be? in the eternal hell yeah of, like that little yeah. that little wheel of cheese going by like that yeah outtake yeah from, yeah yeah, um, yeah. Oh, what's yeah you've got a you've got a in the um in the emmet otter thing that's the emmet otter yeah yeah and you have to get it in the right position and i'm always like come close come really close because the the, the shot's really tight get as close as you can yeah and then everybody gets angry and then everybody is just switches off and then it comes back and you're delirious and it's hilarious again. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I think we got it the second time we did it. <laughs> yeah, um, that probably happened there, I'm sure. What I think is that that bowling ball will be really light. Oh, of yeah. course, yeah. Because <laughs> that's my, my concern is like, how heavy is this bowling ball? <laughs> just to crush his, again, crush his hand. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Chip. another thing that, <laughs> another thing that says that's the hand you do not want to break. No. <gasps> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Jim's hand is yeah. insured for a lot of money. The most sure. valuable hand in the world. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that tells me they did it loads is if you watch the assistant puppeteer in that, they just come in. The assistant puppeteer, as we know, is doing the right hand of the newsman. It's mm. a sec- separate person. So they just come in and the hand plants on the table, stays there, doesn't move, and then leaves again. Or like it just maybe comes up at the end of it because he doesn't leave, does he? Um, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't so leave. I think that person would have been doing more. Yeah. And then like on the 50th take, they're like, no, nope, <laughs> I'm not risking it. I'm just staying still. Yeah. <laughs> Try to like always pin him in place. Like, just, just minimize, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's zero risk for me. I won't be the one who makes this happen again. <laughs> But no, I mean, yeah, it's a cute gag. I think we've now fallen into the area of the, the Muppet News Flash. We've moved beyond these sort of like long sort of weird interviews with, I don't know, <laughs> uh, yeah. the guests being like these sort of local interest stories. And now it's just mm-hmm. toss things on the Muppet News, man. Like, yeah, this is what he does now. Yeah, yeah, which I like. I think it's great. I like yeah. it. Yeah. It's short, sharp and funny. Exactly. Yeah. It's a good little boom boom gag. Done. Yeah. But like he, so he's doing the news. In the theatre. Yeah. (laughs) I know, we always have this sort of ongoing question about, like, in the reality of, like, The Muppet Show, is that Muppet News Flash a sketch that they are aware they're doing? Yeah, or is it just like, that's what's on the news in the world at this point in time? Exactly. Or, like, are we looking at, like, some of the Pigs in Space uh, sketches? And so many of them are like, you know, if something else changes, like, so last week... Fozzie Bear steps in for Miss Piggy and then the yep. sketch goes off in this odd direction where Link is just trying to like make out with Fozzie and they're like was <laughs> yeah. this always the sketch like cause it's, yeah. like, or is this now <laughs> changed to and, it's, and there's no sort of in world explanation ever it's not like it's suddenly like an acorn antiques thing where they're trying to keep it on track it's just like nah he's just gonna try and make out with Fozzie and you're like <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> okay whatever you want yeah yeah what's funny about that is i know I, i'm not allowed to talk about that episode but i must mention no, go that it. that costume is pinned onto the front of fozzy yeah because it clearly yeah. doesn't fit him it's miss picky's costume so it's just like stuck to the front of his body well that's what we noticed with his uh fozzy's mother as well despite having ears she just has an earring attached to her cheek that they've just like jabbed in there <laughs> so they were like it's close enough it's fine is it cheek ring yeah it's like, oh yeah you know the pigs in space outfit on Fozzy does look particularly strange like it's not it's like nowhere near his shoulders or anything no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a beautiful wig though it's a lovely wig <laughs> like, they give him a really nice wig <laughs> they spent all the money on the wig and none on making sure that he actually looked like he was wearing the pigs in space We've outfit all been there. we will spend more money on the wig <laughs> Uh, somebody who spent a lot of money on some nice tartan is Gonzo. <laughs> nice transition. <laughs> Thanks, I thought so. <laughs> he's so cute in that outfit. He is. Oh, he's adorable. <laughs> you can see his little chest. <laughs> <laughs> Ina Kleiner knacked music. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, a little night music. Mozart, of course. <laughs>
this is one of the first times we've actually seen Gonzo in that usual or like the more typical what we're used to Gonzo yes. style of him just doing a number or doing something and it all going completely wrong. I was like, what's going to happen? Why is he on this big pole? And then when we cut to that beaver, I was in hysterics. <laughs> that was an adorable beaver. Like, it's so cute. So cute. His little fingers. Have you seen them? Yes. Little, little foamy fingers and those teeth. I think those, like, because it was covered in the actual, like, wood chips. Sawdust, it? I think yeah. that tooth was actually <laughs> attacking that pole. <laughs> It was. It, it was a very effective. It was doing yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I made a note t- to say like it's so believable that he is. I mean, he's not really doing it, but it, it's so believable that <laughs> he's eating that pole. Right. We always do stuff like with food and stuff. We'd always be like, "Give me some foam pieces." Mm-hmm. So apart from Cookie Monster, who does like crunch a cookie and it explodes, yeah, because it's a special kind of baked cookie. Uh, Otherwise, we'd like they've just thrown the sawdust in the beaver's mouth. Yeah, <laughs> but, it looks, thing. but really it looks like effective. it's working. It does look like it's working. Yeah, it looks really effective, and I think like the way they've cut it, he, like as he's sort of chowing down on the on the yeah. wood, like they cut just in time that you're sort of like, oh, he could he could be he could be yeah chipping away. Well, the timing it, you know? is great because you come back and yeah. more's gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really clever. So good. Little it's chisel really, teeth. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then when Gonzo goes absolutely flying. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, like, because it's it's black screen, isn't it? And probably mm. like the um what do you call it when it's when you shoot on black like that? And they uh crush I think they crush the blacks in the edit. Yeah. So like so is that right? I, I so it that then right. in the <laughs> like I just said yes with authority. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. So basically whatever if you're wearing black and the background's black, you would be able to see like the light hitting you mm. uh, yeah, on your body. But if they crush the blacks in the edit, you lose all of that. So you could probably reverse it and see Dave there in a black yeah. suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although with these Disney Plus edits, they did uh, tinker with the saturation and stuff. Don't know if you see sometimes Kermit's luminous. Yeah. Yeah. He's there's really even there bright. was even a shot. I can't, there was a shot even in this one. I, I, I maybe I'll remember it when we get to it. Where there is a real sort of like woof. Like it's uh, it, again mm. <laughs> speaking of uh, uh, <laughs> webcams. It's like the when you're like mm. 2007, like trying to get your MySpace photo, and you turn the contrast <laughs> up to like 10 or 11. So it's just like you have no nose whatsoever. It's just some eyes and but like some lips. And a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, they. Uh, one thing I did notice with that saturation situation they've done is sometimes it changes the zoot's nose. Oh, I suppose because it's foam mm. and stuff, or I don't know, some yeah. something. I don't know. I'm not technical like that, but yeah. somehow that it like changed his nose color in some shots. It does sometimes make that um when they have those. I, I never quite know what it is, but I notice it a lot in like 1970s TV. Whenever you're sort of like shining a torch or a light into the yeah. camera, and you sort of get that kind of drag from yeah, the, yeah, sort of yeah. the light moving it does really like highlight burning. that as well the contrast mm. yeah the burn exactly like it really does kind of like emphasize that it's quite a cool effect in a weird way but it's uh it's, yeah, it I does like sort it. of like date it ever so slightly yeah emma would you watch gonzo uh <laughs> perform bagpipes on an 11 foot pole i mean for the comedy value yeah, <laughs> yeah. but i don't know if I, I would necessarily pay money to see it <laughs> oh i would <laughs> I've got to say, I think from too many years of doing the Edinburgh Fringe, I do hate bagpipes now. Because like, it's just oh, no. too many like hours hung over on the mile, hearing somebody play just like Amazing Grace again. And you're just like, I can't <laughs> listen to this anymore. So uh, bagpipes have forever been tainted for me, unfortunately. Oh no, that's my finale. Scuppered. Oh no! <laughs> I was well, gonna play us out. <laughs> I'll just I'll log off. You have fun. <laughs> like, you Go for your life. Yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> um, somebody who is going for their life once he uh, has survived his eleven foot fall. Gonzo is going full flirty little weirdo when he gets and sees that uh, that cow backstage. Um, I mean, I know we all agreed it's a very beautiful cow, but the, yeah, Gonzo, if it's not a chicken, it's a cow. If it's not like a, what was that? Like dancing cheese that he was doing? Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. oh God, yeah. Yolanda, the dancing cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that we're now fully into like little weirdo Gonzo and we've moved on mm. beyond sort of like serious artist. Yeah, I love Gonzo. Yeah. He still seems to be in this like showbiz manager phase though. 
where he's like going on about like great pair of legs and <laughs> do you want to be in show business? And yeah. I think that was just full come on. That was just uh, you know, like, it's, uh, it's like you want to be a star, don't you? Like, so. That cow's already Bunk. got representation. <laughs> if, if, it's, if, yeah. if, it's with, if it's hanging about with Julie Andrews, like it doesn't need Gonzo's help. Like, no. That cow's getting paid better than anybody in the room. Yeah, it's getting paid better than any of us. Like that cow's getting paid better. It's always like when an animal comes on, you know that they're getting paid more because it's like an animal and a handler. Yeah, <laughs> and they have to be fed and looked after and stuff. I I had a I have a running guy that there is there's that dog that's in like Batman Returns and Silence of the Lambs and some other great movie. I'm like that dog has like more and better film credits than I do, and that dog doesn't even know where it is. Like you can't even see colours. Like just, just walking around, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like that dog's richer than I am and has a better CV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's fine. It's, better. it's okay, Lewis. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. <laughs> so we have a bit more backstage, but it kind of leads directly into Swedish Chef. Wait, mm. wait, wait, you've th- jumped. Rolf. Rolf, Rolf. Oh my god, no, I've turned my, I've turned my path the wrong <laughs> way around. I've, going to my, I've gone back to Cleo Lane. Like, I've gone the wrong way. Oh, now? that's good. They sing a... Um, oh, can't remember. What's, like, what's that I've song? I've forgotten the name of it. I uh, hear singing, but the... Yeah, the... Um, I smell flowers, but the... Yeah, while they're making a salad. I'll talk about that. I love that. <laughs> you've, come to the, you've come to the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> I turned up on the wrong day. Yeah. <laughs> You're just in love. Is the You're just it. in love. Thank you. Oh, yeah. that's, we go straight to Rolf. Yes. Okay. No, I, I don't want to talk is... about that Swedish chef. <laughs> no, forget it. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just about to show my like whole like uncultured ass, but like I didn't get this gag. It's the Moonlight Sonata, Lewis. <laughs> but if you don't know that, nobody says that. No, no one says it. Well, I guess I could have got there, but I suppose I was confused at why Rolf would be surprised at the moonlight like turning up. Do you know what I mean? If it's Moonlight Sonata, that kind of makes I sense. I don't think you would get there without some good research. <laughs> I should know. Yeah. I I, how would you ever know the name of that? I think it's quite. It is quite a famous bit of music. Or mm. and like, I, I do. I Maybe think this point, is one of these. More bits people for, knew. Yeah, yeah, I think it's one of those things for me where, like, you know, forty years ago, people knew more classical music than we do mm. now. Like, it more, was just yeah, we're not as cultured. Yeah, like it was just part of life a bit more. I think than than it is because I think yeah. they quite often draw especially for Rolf obviously on traditional classical pieces but especially if it's a UK spot you don't necessarily get the explanation of what the song is not that this was a UK spot but mm. you know it's it's I think there was just a sort of an understanding that people would recognize it and I mean yeah. I think with this one with the moon, I think you're meant to put two and two together. Like, oh, he's playing Moonlight Sonata. All right. Well, the thing <laughs> well... is, okay. no, the thing is, because I got confused because the way that he was also playing when he was sort of looking at his like whatever you call like the sheet music, it looked like he was thrown by how long the piece was. And so for me, I thought the gag was the piece is going on so long that it's now night time. Night time. Mm-hmm. That, I like, always thought that too. Like, that's what I thought the gag was. And I was like, I was waiting mm. for then, like, the sun to come up afterwards. Mm-hmm. That he was just, like, kept, he was going to keep looking. The sheet music was just going to go on and on. Like, obviously, I've heard the phrase, like, Moonlight Sonata before. But, yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I think uh, I'm just showing my lack of uh, culture, I guess. And that's fine. But what's good is, and this happened to me, like, I never would know those pieces of music. But now I do know them. Yeah. And I know what they're called. And I feel like all educated yeah. <laughs> because of it real fancy like so, <laughs> yeah so the Muppet Show does that for us it brings us all you know it educates us musically it does it's great so yeah, that's so, there <laughs> so thank god we now know any old iron and you know <laughs> like... I would never have heard of No No Nanette without the Muppet uh, Show like <laughs> some, <laughs> some of these musicals that we like call me madam like you know just these things I now have in my head as information is uh, yeah <laughs> It'll come up one day. I'm ready like, for a oh, pub quiz in like 1979. <laughs> like, that's what I'm ready for. So I've just recently read the new Kate Atkinson novel and literally one of the first pages mentions No No Nanette. And I'm like, I know 
know what that is. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> it's not a story point at all. It's just mentioned in passing. But I was like, oh my God, like, this is crazy. Thank you, Muppet Show. <laughs> um, just technically about these Rolf bits. Yeah. Something that I uh, talk about with other puppeteers is that, so if you put your hand up, Jim's right-handed, right? So if you put your right hand up above your head, and then think the camera is to the to the right of Jim. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so try and turn your hand, which is in front of you, to the right. Yeah, that's like hard. You, it's against your wrist. You can't yeah, really yeah. do it. It's not. It's not nice. So if that piano was the opposite way, you know, flipped, it'd be so easy to glance into the camera. Yeah. And they always would put that piano in that position, and I don't. I just don't know why. It's always against the wrist. That does seem weird. Hmm. <laughs> No, I'm trying there to must f- be a, there must be a good reason. It wasn't to do with where the assistant would be for the other hand. No, it's it? just as easy for the assist to be. Okay. The assist is doing both, I think. Yeah. Uh, both both hands, mm-hmm. so they would always just be awkwardly under there. Yeah. Either way. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I it's feel like Doctor Teeth thing. is quite often on that side as well when he looks to camera. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes Doctor Teeth's flat out to the camera. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and for some reason they they choose that side. I don't know. Mm. And it's not. Like that's a grand piano. Yeah, well, that's a grand, right? So the lid opens that way. Yeah, but but yeah. still, when it's not, when it's an upright, they still choose that side. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm now trying to think about like every time I've like ever seen a piano in a movie, and I'm like, are they always doing it one particular? Yeah, is way? there just a, is there a particular way to do it? I don't know. Yeah, I think they are quite often facing that way, but I think you do sometimes see them facing the other. Mm. I mean, I can't, yeah. it just it, it hurts when I look at it. It hurts me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ow, sympathy twinge. Yeah. <laughs> And and I'm always like, you won't be able to turn all the way. Yeah. <laughs> you won't make it. <laughs> Emma, how does this stack up for you uh, as our as our you know Rolf lover of the group? How does this stack up for you? Did you know it was Moonlight Sonata? No, I didn't yes! know it was Moonlight Vindication! Sonata. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I thought it was quite sweet. It was nice to see kind of Rolf like having his little solo moment again and him noticing the moon obviously rising very quickly and kind of like his panic at trying to ch- turn yeah. the pages and get the piece finished in time. So I thought it was quite a sweet little moment for him. It was. He's, I mean, he's always adorable. He's gorgeous always. And he gets these tiny little bits to do. But he was the first famous Muppet mm. he, back on the Jimmy Dean show. Yeah. And I think maybe before that, he did these like dog food commercials with that little flat faced dog that's in the goat herd number. He sat down in the pub with Rolf, I think. Maybe next to him. Yes. And it's funny to think that those characters and that particular little dog puppet are from the 60s. Mm. And they're still, like, you know, they still are around now. They're still working. Like, <laughs> that's they're great? Still, you know, that's that the kind of career you want. Like, yeah. Like, ad money's the good money. Like, that's. that's, that's <laughs> yeah, the, they made so much back then. They don't need to be. Yeah, that. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so we go from a Moonlight Sonata to <laughs> a very kind of like. Uh, oh my god, I've just forgotten the name. Insane? Of the <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, it's very um, like a laughing style kind of sketch mm. where <laughs> we're just lobbing Muppets for about yeah. a minute from either side of the stage <laughs> yeah, while, yeah, yeah. while Julie and uh, Kermit sort of do their sort of best Wimbledon impression of, of looking side to side. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's dumb, but it's really fun. <laughs> like, there's nothing fun. Like, yeah. it's that shot in The Great Muppet Caper where they just lob the Muppets out of that double-decker bus. Like, there's just nothing funnier than just <laughs> tossing some Muppets. Yeah. Although the Zucchini Brothers, I think they are on a wire because they fly through so straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Robin's definitely true. being lobbed around. Yeah, he's just be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think at one point he hits the wall, doesn't he, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just slams down. <laughs> and then his, like, stunt double bops back up. Being like, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. When it cut to the wall to start with, it felt like it was quite peanuts y with, you know, mm. like you get Charlie Brown and Linus at the wall. But then obviously when it started with the lobbing, I was like, oh no, this is not, <laughs> this is, this is not a new talk spot situation. This is just a lot of silliness. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. it's, it's really good fun. And the interruptions, the way that Gonzo and Fozzy and everyone interrupt is, is really well done, I think. Yeah. Like it, there's like a natural, rhythm to it yeah. and then yeah. when it gets into it it's just still sort of i mean i don't know if it necessarily builds as such but there's just something very enjoyable yeah. about watching yeah. them <laughs> them do it the choreography of that fozzy feeling the need to have to come in to explain they've got two cats yeah. <laughs> it's very adorable it's like oh i'm sorry <laughs> like, it pops up like it's so cute gonzo says sweetums and thog are playing badminton uh and i never understood what he said until i was an adult 
I thought you said Sweetums and Thugger playing bad making. Because he says badminton, you know, oh. not badminton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was always like, bad making? Like, what is that? Like, rude? Is it rude? <laughs> Sweetums and, I saw Sweetums and Thog bad making in the, in the backstage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I've called it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love Julie's ensemble in this. It's a great little like vest and like basically I'd wear everything that Julie wears this episode, yeah. <laughs> particularly the coat from the last number. But uh, mm-hmm. we will get there. But it's uh, yeah, she looks great. I was quite surprised to see the Zucchini brothers back, especially after the last episode we were discussing the limbo Muppet limbo Warwick. Mm-hmm. It feels like mm-hmm. they're doing the Zucchini brothers accents, even though clearly it's not meant to be an Italian situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this, I'm now like, the Zucchini brothers are now back, and they're still they're still going. Also, clearly not what Disney did mean with the disclaimer on the last episode, because there was no disclaimer on this. For the yeah, Zucchini they were like, brothers. no, the Zucchini uh, brothers right. are fine. Are fine. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. I know it's like because on some episodes you'll get a warning. You're like, oh god, what's going to happen? And it's just mm. like one smoking muppet, and yeah, then you'll yeah. get another episode, and it's like, oh no, racism! Like, you know yeah, I mean? like yeah, it's yeah. just like it really runs the gamut. And then sometimes mm. you don't get a warning at all. And you're like, oh, yeah. I guess like comedy you want, Italian you want the warning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I do like that grey uh, zucchini brother, the one with the long nose. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's a really good puppet. I they think it's a great puppet. Puppets. <laughs> but him especially, he's in the he's the one in the from the Vincent Price episode where the T V starts to eat him. Do you oh remember that? God. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, scary. We, that Vincent Price episode was <laughs> I think that puppet's we talked still around. for so long about that. Vincent, that was like our longest episode for a while because we were just like, yeah. what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like a fever dream. Did you just say the puppet's still around? That puppet, the very puppet's still around, yeah. You can see it. Like, if you watch, um, we used it in Muppets oh Most Wanted. God. It's like old. But like, it, in, wow. um, it's in Christmas Carol. He's the, he, I'm pretty sure he's the fruit, the fruit and oh. veg seller. You know, um, I don't like vegetables, yeah. I like them. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, I think that's him. And then in Muppet Treasure Island, he's, he's got an <gasps> eye patch on, his yellow hair, and he's sweeping the deck. Oh my deck. God, this is like. Um, he's in the gulag. Uh, let me think, where is he now? He's in, he's, I think he's just in a cell, one of the cells. That's, in the that, gulag. That's he's there. blowing my mind. <laughs> yeah, when you think like it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's completely not. Can, can I, sorry, just while we're talking about old Muppets, Wayne and Wanda. Mm. Are they the original Muppets? No. The oh. ones that we use these days, no. That's mm. upsetting. Well, they would have... Wanda's like foam. That original Wanda is foam. Oh, so she would have disintegrated. So she's probably like yeah. perished. Yeah. Although like the early piggies, because of the foam they're made from, it's, we call it soft foam. It's like mm-hmm. a mattress foam, that kind of dens- density. It's all about the density in the foam. The, the, the more dense, the denser it is, the longer it will last. Yeah. Okay. The, more, the more porous it is, it will dry up and crunch. Oh. Like Gonzo's nose will dry mm-hmm. up. He starts looking like but Muppets like the old Haunted piggies. Mansion Gonzo, which yeah, 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 he found yeah. very upsetting. Like that is, <laughs> yeah. I oh, loved it. It was, like, ew, it was so, so upsetting in a way that's sort of like not. Oh yeah, God. Yeah, I was just like, oh, that's a cool puppet. <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool piece of art. But yeah, so like, so she might exist, but like she would have not usable. Yeah, yeah. But I wonder. So, but it's good that you think that it means that the person who made them made them really yeah. well yeah they're i think lars gorgeous. uh somebody worked with called lars made them or made wayne i'm sure <laughs> but not wonder because they're feuding <laughs> like they don't know. i don't know yeah I, I feel like i know that lars made wayne but i don't know who made wonder in our sort of uh in world what we've decided that um wonder at the end of the first season actually left to join moomin chance uh, so she's actually touring Europe now, doing like uh, like obscure puppet work, and Wayne is in some regional panto. Like that's what we decided. For, uh, <laughs> oh. But you know they get the, they get another chance. Do you know this? What? No. no. All right, I, I, I won't say anymore. Oh my god! <laughs> if they get another chance, <laughs> we do see Wanda here, looking slightly different in at the dance. Ugh. She has a grey wig on. But, yes. So is this the same lady or maybe it's her sister? Oh know. my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's Vonda. Vonda. Shonda and Vonda. 
<laughs> Congratulations, Deborah. You're on your way. Um, yeah, I love that sketch though, but it's so not relevant right now. But yeah, I was so angry at for a brief moment I thought we were getting a full at the dance sketch again. We we are a fully anti at the dance uh, sketch. I know, oh, yeah. you hate we, it. We, we do. And then I was like sideswiped and then we get no. we get a number from Gonzo which then just sneaks in a couple of little uh, at the dance numbers uh, one of my favorite Gonzo songs it's lovely and like it's it's very much in the vein of like the the sort of sad Gonzo of like the Madeline Khan episode it's very it's yeah. very sweet although it feels very a very quick careen from like maybe like from the sort of Gonzo who was like flirting <laughs> outrageously with the cow backstage it's not really sort of threaded as well as the madeline khan episode no but i think this is like the first time the chicken the, the camilla chicken thing comes up right yeah yeah this yeah is, it's a big moment it's a big character development yeah. moment this is a huge huge gonzo moment mm. that he finally meets camilla even though i was like is she dressed like a mermaid <laughs> she's meant to have a <laughs> she's just got a very slow skirt on yeah. <laughs> but again <laughs> The logistics of what she's wearing, how long are her legs? Yeah. Like yeah. That? Well, I can tell you why it is. Because Dave's doing... So, so there's, only so, there's, only, there's only so many people there. There's like... I've, I've written this down. You've got Richard. You can tell this by the voices. Richard, who's doing the Wonder Lady, I think. Um, Jim and Frank. Jim's doing Kermit and Miss Mousy. Frank's doing Piggy and the Pig in the tuxedo, in the suit. And Jerry is... Uh, there's a, uh, two whatnots there. Yeah, there's two whatnots on there, yeah. And then Dave's doing Gonzo. That's the only people who are here doing mm-hmm. this. So then you see a, a single of Camilla, which I would imagine is Jerry, maybe, but it could be anybody because she doesn't say anything. And then when she comes in, Dave's doing both of them spinning. So because he's, he's he has his hands up and like his hands are at the same height, you would see straight off the bottom of that chicken because it's so mm-hmm. short. Yeah, you just see off. You see her legs dangling, and you'll see. So they put that like tube on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to to cover his yeah. arm, and so she can be a, a high height because he's just spinning around like a crazy person, <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing it really well. Their eyes are locked, like you think you would lose um, with your arms above your head spinning. Yeah. And he's got a headset on, like he's got a mic on. The wires in those days were attached to the wall on the boxes, like he's not wireless yet. And he's just spinning for his life. God, that's mad. But he does a really good job of keeping them looking into each other's eyes. Yeah. yeah. And they spin fast They as spin well. a lot. They yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Really spinning. He's dedicated. Yeah. That's amazing. And now the band is playing very slow. And once again, I'll get my coat and go a lonely one. Flower waiting by the wall without the will. Power to face the music at all. Please, won't somebody dance with me? Start up a romance with me. Just someone to care. Someone somewhere who will dance with me. Emma, what were your thoughts of this? Uh, this at the dance meets Gonzo solo meets the meeting of. I just, I just oh, want to slide in here that the song is "Won't Somebody Dance with Me," and it was written by Lindsay DePaul, and she won the Ivor Novello Award. Oh wow! It. She was the first oh. woman, I think, to win the Ivor and the Vello. Oh, so. I wondered if it was an original song for them, but it's not. No, no, it's oh. not. It came out in 1974, so it's mm. quite a recent one. Um, and if you ever need any bedtime reading to nod off to, Lindsay DePaul's Wikipedia page is extremely extensive, and I can thoroughly <laughs> recommend reading it if you need to nod off. <laughs> I'll that, leave it there. That makes me think that I do any research for this show. Like, I just, I watch the... No, I'm saying if you need to fall asleep, Lewis, do oh, not worry about the research I've, part. I've, just on uh... Emma's recommendation, I, my current audiobook to fall asleep to is uh, Hayley Mills' autobiography. <laughs> it's so soothing. Like, she's just talking about, like, being at the Disney Studios in the night 50s. Her voice I is love her voice. Just like, you know she's on tour right now. Is she? she? She's in a show, is yeah. Is she? Wow, it's good for her. I, I, it's the best exotic marigold hotel, I think. Oh, is that it's called. Of course, you know, they you know put I mean. it on stage. Like, <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, good for her. Like, good for Haley Mills. Yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway, Emma, yeah. sorry. Continue. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought it was quite nice. Obviously, when the at the dance music started, I was a bit yeah. like, oh no, it's coming back again. 
But I thought it was quite funny to see Gonzo and then obviously Camilla in her like pink sparkly dress. But also what I thought was also quite interesting was that you obviously had Kermit dancing with Miss Mousy. Yeah. And they had no interaction with Miss Piggy. Like I thought she would have like karate chopped her, (laughs) tried to like throw her out of the ballroom, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, because like you could have just as easy had Kermit and Piggy dancing and yeah. Miss Mousy and that other thing. Yeah, or maybe I, I would have liked like we sort of see them dancing in the background and then we cut over somewhere else and then we come back and Miss Mousy is just gone and then it's just yeah. Miss Piggy <laughs> holding Kermit and like some other dance partner. Yeah. Like, wait, what? Or you could just imagine Frank just playing Piggy where she's like glaring at Miss yeah, Mousy. Yeah, that's interesting. That nothing mm. happened. There wasn't even yeah. a glance. Yeah, or yeah. A, like a hip bounce or yeah. something. Yeah, maybe it was yeah. like late in the day, <laughs> you know. Maybe it was like sort of like a uh, let's just, you know, we're already back in the yeah. ballroom. We don't want to be here, so let's just get this. Yeah. Get this done. And also, if you think that each person has two puppets on their arms up above their heads, and then the the puppets are attached to each other, yeah, it's quite hard to do anything else other than keep them up in the air. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, you <laughs> can't just like you can't use an arm rod or something. They're all pinned and taped, and it's worth looking at the um, Muppet movie test footage. Mm to see more Miss Mousy saga. She's not in it, but Kermit and Piggy are talking about her. Oh, and really? Yeah, yeah. It's just oh, all, okay. it's all ad-libbed. Like, it's just to see what the Muppets look like out in the real world. Yeah, because I've seen the, the sort of test footage movie. of Kermit out, like, by a field yeah. talking to a cow. But That's it, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 There's, like, there's an extended version. I think it's on uh, Disney+. Plus. Oh, really? And Kermit and Piggy are just sat on a log out in a field. Oh, nice. And she starts talking about Miss Mousy and like, oh, where is she? And that kind of thing. <laughs> She's <laughs> dead. She's yeah. just trampled <laughs> under a cow. It's, just, it's worth worth tracking it. So when we realise that Miss Mousy has gone, yeah. you know, there's evidence there. <laughs> <laughs> Opening this cold case. <laughs> Before we move on, Warwick, what are your thoughts on the ballroom more generally? Like a traditional ballroom, not not this. Oh, like uh, what the, my the, thoughts? Well, like, the like, the black, black pool. Yeah, oh. not, not your thoughts on like strictly. Like, yeah. Well, you know, like I don't really hate it, but it's one of those things that I'm like, it's a commercial break. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to pay attention anymore. Yeah, but then like if if it gets to the you know the joke sometimes are a bit. I'm always looking at the puppets and like, oh, but aren't they pretty puppets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't hate it. Sadly, sorry. No, it's fine. No, no we'll we'll fine. find other people to join our ante at the dance. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like that you're just all like, no, the puppets are good still. I'm happy yeah. with the puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Way down south, way down in Borneo, there's a wild man called the Borneo. Way down on Borneo Bay. Even though you've got a corneo, you'll dance till the break of dawn. Yo. Way down on Borneo Bay. Wild man stand with his clothes all torn. Yo. Toot, toot, toots on bamboo horn. Yo. Then the bamboo babies start to sway. Start to sway. When you see them dance a Borneo, you'll just put your jewels in Borneo. Way down on Borneo Bay. Well, a bunch of puppets who I wrote, my first note is, get these hippies away from Julie Andrews. <laughs> um, we have another sort of... <laughs> Somewhere between barnyard slash hick muppets. Although these are the least upsetting hick muppets I think we've had yeah. so far. These ones are the kind they've of been, they've been refined. Yeah, these are the kind yeah. of hick muppets yeah. or like hick performers that you would get in like a Disneyland frontier land. Do you know what I mean? Like these feel like none of them's gonna like I don't know steal your shoes. This is Lou Buck Lou and his jug huggers. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> <laughs> they have a name. Lou Lou Buck Lou Lou Buck. I don't know if I'm saying that probably. Lubbock or Lubbock Lou and his and jug huggers. His, probably... And the jug huggers. Yeah. That's what they're called. <laughs> Lord. No, I mean... uh, but these are the ones that stay. These stay now. And they're in they're in specials and stuff. Okay, well mm. I'm I'm happy for these ones to stay. And at least they were only the UK spot. They didn't actually make Julie do anything with them. I love so. this number, by the way. It's, I did yeah, I learned I love I, it. I, I, I know all the words. <laughs> <laughs> No, this was, I think this is the first Hick number where I got to the end. I was like, actually, this was fairly charming because there was no like foam Muppet feet stomping into mud or like some really, I don't know, like uh, just Twiggy stuck with a bunch of puppets on a farm. And you're just like, what the hell is going on? This was, uh, yeah, yeah, I liked this. But that's Louise Gold and Jerry Nelson doing those. Louis, I think Louise is the the female Mm. puppet. And Slim Wilson, I think, is the main guy. The guy with the ponytail. 
But whenever Louise and Jerry are singing, it's brilliant. It's yeah. perfect. It's great. She has a great, yeah. It's, it is a lot of fun. I feel like they've, they've found a bit, like they found a sweet spot of how to use these kind of Muppets and yeah. actually have like fun, enjoyable songs. Because mm. I think especially in the first season, some of them are quite down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're just a bit like yeah. okay. They fixed it, yeah. And they were yeah. they were they sing with Bernadette Peters, Applejack. Yeah, Applejack's amazing. And then they do uh, Henrietta's wedding another time, and these those those are the characters. They basically kind of become characters now. That's okay. fine. I'm happy. I'm happy cool. for these ones to stay. They can stay. I, I <laughs> as long as there's no more feet yeah, stomping no more in the mud, water. I'm fine. There are naked feet, but I don't think they ever hit the mud again. Good. <laughs> <laughs> very... It's too expensive to put puppet well, feet in the mud anyway. That's what I bought as well at the first place, and then it's it's not exactly like you're getting like a oh what a lovely effect. It's like that's disgusting. Like do you know what I mean? Like what a what a sick thing to do. <laughs> at least it's puppet feet though. Like I'd hate to see human feet doing that. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not like the Muppets Nasty. do foxy boxing. Like it's not just like people <laughs> out in mud. <laughs> Then we go uh, backstage to Juliet and Kermit into probably one of the most sweetest things I've ever seen in my whole <laughs> entire life. Yeah. We kind of start off with them having a little chat and talking about the origin of the song, a uh, song for Kermit. And, you know, I like the fact that Kermit's like, oh, yes, you've written songs and books. <laughs> and Julie's like, yes. <laughs> she gets that, gets that promo in. Available at all good yeah. bookstores. Yeah. <laughs> But I think that's just, I don't think that her people are saying you must mention the books. I think that's probably just Jim. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like oh, saying, 100%. You know, I literally have written yeah. all over this, Jim loves mm, Julie. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. so plain to see. Yeah. And then obviously, I just love her, how she just starts off a song. She just kind of gets into the essence of it. And, <laughs> just, oh, just a little it was lean. Just just so a, sweet. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, and he's like, it's just them two. It's a tight shot. They're in a dark dressing room. <laughs> It's great. Like you, you don't need anything uh, else. <laughs> now this song, it's a it's a weird one. He hates no, it. I don't he hates hate it. it. <laughs> it's more just like the lyrics like careen around a little bit. Like, and I mm. the only thing that confuses me, and maybe it's because I don't have the original context of when they performed this song two three years ago. Why is she saying she's a fish? It's based on a poem. Oh, it's from an old poem. Okay. Um, by Langdon Smith, who was an American journalist and author. I'm not really. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> he is most well for his poem called Evolution, which is this, which begins with "When you were a tadpole uh, and I were a fish." Okay, all right. So that's where the first line comes from from that poem, and then I suppose she wrote the rest of the song for Kermit. And they first performed it on her special, which was called "My Favorite Things," which is in 1975. And fish are one of her favorite things. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Mm-hmm. When you were a tadpole and I was a fish, when the whole world had barely begun, as far back as that, I saw you swim by with a smile in your eyes. And I loved you from that moment on. That's a lovely thought. It's just adorable, isn't it? The way, like, they're clearly so comfortable together. Like, Mm. the way that Kermit's kind of cuddling up to her and the affection that she has in her eyes for him. Yeah. I mean, she is a great actress, but it just, you're like, this isn't you acting. You just love Kermit. You You love him. Like, it's it's just... And you kind of get that with puppets where, like... As a puppeteer, the character has a relationship that's sweeter than a human relationship. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I do Dodge, who's a little dog. He's a six-year-old dog. So the way somebody might react to him is definitely not the way they would react to me. They're not going to like pat me on the head and stroke <laughs> me and look into my little beady eyes. <laughs> but they will with him, you know. <laughs> so you can get like like super sweet relationship with a puppet and a human. I think. I've always wondered as a puppeteer, is it an odd sensation to have someone, like, particularly if that, that relationship is incredibly strong, to have that sort of entire relationship happening just with your, like, left or right hand? Or is it, mm. are you, I don't know, maybe this is a stupid question. Or, like, or are you just so no, in it that it's kind question. of just like, there's no separation, do you know what I mean? You're, it's, you're in the moment, yeah. as it were. No, there is complete separation. 
Okay. Um, but you're so in it, that's why there's complete separation. I'm not looking at that person. When they're doing that to Dodge, like patting him on the head, like for instance, my co-presenter Evie mm. Pickerel, who is a CBB's presenter, she has a brilliant, sweet, loving relationship with Dodge. Like he's a, a nephew or, you know, a pet, I suppose. And But like I'm not involved in it because I'm just looking down at the TV screen and watching it happen. Yeah. So it's completely removed, actually. Gosh, that's such a... And we have a different relationship. Gosh, that's... And I think that's what's happened here. Yeah. 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 And and because it's like so pure and it's innocent, um, it's not embarrassing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If anything, maybe that separation makes it even easier to be able to do like, you know, it's yes, it's your arm, but that you're not even looking at it. You're just sort of looking at the screen and you're seeing the sort My of My head's always down yeah. looking aw- and away, down and away from where that's happening, which is up to the right above you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just kind of enjoying it and not really thinking about what's coming next, mm. just living in it. God, that's so interesting. It's a bit odd. No, it's not yeah. odd at all. Like, I mean but I do do things where I take the puppet off and say, okay, now let's do that again with just my arm and see how it is. Because <laughs> everybody in the room loves that. It's like, yeah, it's just a hairy knuckled arm. <laughs> and... <laughs> I didn't think Julie Andrews' hands were that hairy. I don't think that's <laughs> Those 1970s cameras were more forgiving, to be fair. <laughs> like just... Soft focus can yeah, exactly. work wonders. Vaseline on a lens. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean it's it's perfect. I know I mentioned it earlier, but that that sort of that long close to the number when Julie looks to the camera with her sort of like mm. <laughs> slightly I don't know like <laughs> smooth brained expression, and then she sort of, <laughs> and then goes over to Kermit and they just linger, and it's such a yeah. weird sort of like a mum and dad gonna kiss like kind of yeah. feeling like it's <laughs> well thing. I think she thinks that when she looks down the lens, beat cut right. Yes. Go to the next bit. Yeah. But then they've in the edit they're like, no, we like this. Let, let her look back to camera. <laughs> yeah. Like she expects that's the end of it when she looks down the lens. That's yeah. the cue to finish. <laughs> it's like, oh no, all right, still going. <laughs> still going. Yeah. And I love that they were holding hands throughout the entire thing. As soon as we cut to them, yeah. their hands are on top they're of one another. They're both such lovies. They they're both the such lovies. Like, no, darling. Yeah. <laughs> darling. <laughs> but I love seeing it. I love seeing that when they like, the buy-in is 100%. Yeah. Mm. And you get that with Linda Ronstadt as well in Kermit. She talks about him loads, like, afterwards. She only worked with him twice. But she talks about it all the time. Like, not all the time. But, like, in her <laughs> book and, like, on interviews, she'll bring Kermit up. And you're like, oh, yeah, you loved him, didn't you? You really liked him. I love that, but it's just like another guy. Yeah. You know, someone she enjoys being around. Yeah. God. I mean, it's good. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and then we go from this to Sam the Eagle doing his sort of latest. <laughs> McCarthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is something. See, this is something. It's funny, fine, but this is something I, I could. I'd rather watch At the Dance than this. This, well, this bit. is a bad monologue, to be fair. It's a bit dull. I mean,. I, I've, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Captain America's shield needs to be replaced with the Sam the Eagle shield that hangs at the back of this. <laughs> like, that would make the Marvel franchise a lot more appealing to me. Um, it's just almost satire, I guess. That's the kind of only note I have for this. It's just a bit kind of something of nothing, really. Mm. The puppet looks good. Again, the puppet oh, looks good. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, yeah. It looks so is... good. It's like a brand new toy. It's so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so pretty. Oh, it's such a such a gorgeous puppet. I think, again, this is something that maybe would have landed with a bit more pizzazz in the late 70s. Mm. And there's a big there's a big um, crescendo on the laugh track when he says, I have here a list. And it's definitely obviously meant to be like a, right. a like McCarthy parody. <clears throat> so I think I think like some of that's just sort of got lost in. Through time. The time. Yeah. 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 I mean, but you can also still see exactly where it's going, where he's going to read American Bold Eagle on the yeah. list. And I think that's just something a bit. It takes a long time to get there. Yeah. For not much pain. Yeah. yeah. But this, this, this thing of him, nothing. you know, the, the, his, what is his short side, I suppose? This comes back a lot, doesn't it, now? Mm. This becomes a thing that he does. Where he just doesn't read anything series. that he's about to read before he goes on stage. <laughs> yeah. Like he, yeah. he's like he's doing that puppet show with the like the story about the cricket and the, the grasshopper. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's just like <laughs> you didn't read this once. Like do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, mean, I suppose yeah. he, well, he, he has full faith that yeah. it's going to be good. <laughs> when will he learn? I love yeah. his eyes, the, the oh, pause yeah. on the yeah. left and right. That's really he's, good. Yeah, 
He's be- like for for <laughs> as a sort of reaction gif, Samba Eagle is a sort of perfect, perfect. Kind of like the sort of yep. is nothing sacred from the like <laughs> Muppet Family Christmas. It's a great one to just pull out at any sort of occasion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just when he shifts his eyes and things, like it's such a simple move. Like he doesn't move at no. all, but that just conveys so much of his disdain mm, for yeah. the Muppets. Yeah, that's the brilliance of Frank Oz. <laughs> Frank does stillness really mm. good. Mm. People think they need to move yeah. or not when they've got a puppet on, but Frank does like still and quiet. <laughs> the longer it is, the funnier it gets. <laughs> like the best thing Piggy can do is just stop and look at somebody, and then like <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, you know you're yeah. in trouble. Like yeah. what on earth is going to happen next? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what like, what is she thinking? He does do stillness mm. really well. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can knock through this very quick Swedish chef moment where he's marking up. Wait, no, I think. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, I, like, I did. I, I haven't flipped back to Cleo Lane again. <laughs> like, and then we go to the number <laughs> with uh, Swedish chef where he sings with Cleo Lane. Um, <laughs> no, we get just. Swedish chef marking up this cow for slaughter. Like, he will... Yeah. He'll kill anyone. He was going to kill, like, you know, um, Robin a few episodes ago just because another sketch wasn't happening. So he's like, oh, I'll kill my um, boss's nephew. That'll be fine. Anything for the dish. Yeah, literally. <laughs> well, so my two, my two thoughts here are, yeah. who painted that cow? Whose yep. job was it to do that? Is it chalk? Is it paint? Is it a paintbrush? I'd, I'd like to know the, how that happened. Yeah. Um... <laughs> and then I think Louise is performing the chef because Kermit's there and the chef's there. And the chef has the chalk in his right hand, which means someone's left hand is in the head. God, so this did these deductions. I deduce. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I'm so impressed. Like this is like we're just must like be Louise. Yeah. Well that might also track because a few episodes ago I noticed that Swedish chef again in a backstage sequence with Kermit had a gloved hand. Well, no, not gloved. Very, very feminine hands. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> yeah. that would... <laughs> yeah. But I think, because I, I, I was trying to work out who it was, and I think I read that obviously there are later episodes where he does have gloves on. Um, yeah, but so, that's I think yeah. that's because there's maybe a, fe- yeah. a feminine hand rather than a big yeah. a man hand. <laughs> big, big man, man hand. hand. <laughs> that's how you spot it, though. If his right hand is the one that's doing stuff, it means that it's a left-handed mm-hmm. puppeteer doing the head, and there's only one left-handed puppeteer there. Oh, my God. We're going to have to keep an eye out now. <laughs> 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 I love it. All this inside insider yeah. puppeteer knowledge. It's literally good. insider. <laughs> <Get> inside. <laughs> uh Lewis. My son. Muppet Labs is back. He is I mean, <laughs> every week we're getting closer and closer to the sort of the beaker that we fully recognise. He's not quite yeah. like at his right octave for meeping, but he's kind mm. of got the anxious energy in the hands, but yeah, we're getting there. This week, it's something very relatable to me as somebody who is taking an unbranded Propecia to keep my hairline. Uh, he's using a hair tonic. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, we're even more similar. Uh, Warwick, there's an, uh, a sort of somewhat infamous photo of me from <laughs> from school where I have a school photo where it became known as in our house as the beaker feature because I'm literally like, oh. my face is just like entirely like a tube and my hair, I don't really know what I'm doing with it so it's just stuck straight up and I sort of have a face like, and it just, <laughs> so it's just become known as yeah, the, the beaker photo. Um, not that it will be ever shared in any sort of public forum. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're, talk- we now we're talking. Now we're talking about it. You, there should be a visual yeah, exactly. aid. <laughs> no, I think imagining it is, is far better. But um, yeah, it's, uh, we're getting closer to Beaker being uh, perfect. But um, it's interesting. Mm. It's uh, kind of like a lot of season one. It's interesting watching the evolution of these sort of yeah. now kind of very iconic and set in stone. I know. Yeah, one of the most famous. Yeah, and um, like him, it. the chef and animal are, are kind of the go tos for merchandise because everybody loves them. Yeah, mm. they do. Jade bought me a beaker last year. <laughs> ah, it's interesting that he wasn't there from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's nuts, really. I did think this was quite interesting that it was a hair growth tonic, but Doctor Bunsen didn't. Oh yeah, put it on himself considering he <laughs> is yep. bald. That's, that's, no that's not that stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's got beaker. It's his mind shaft <laughs> canary. <laughs> like you know. <laughs> I understand that, but like he has no hair. Well, then he had a vested interest in making sure it worked. Like, you know. Yeah. What I noticed was when Beaker's hair flies off, 
he doesn't open his mouth again. Yeah, he does. So I think that's like a that's like a separate head with a smoke machine in it or something. Oh, interesting. I wonder so if it was just because they open. didn't want the effect to like the smoke to come out of his mouth as well. Out of his mouth. I think I think it's probably cheaper to like just make a new head. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Um, yeah, I reckon that's what it is. Yeah, they they would not have put that smoke machine inside the puppet. I'm sure. Because oh. it's just yeah. touched. It's just tough. It's like yeah. <laughs> it would ruin it. You may as well make another one. Oh, that's. Mm-hmm. I think it's a second head. Well, that would make more sense. Yeah. Then. yeah so I suppose they. I'm sure they got through loads of those beakers. Oh yeah. You know, they must have. Always blowing it up or something. Like I'm sure they. Yeah, it feels there. like there should be something in like the Museum of Moving Image of like 15 like destroyed beakers line just all there. lined up in various Aww. different kind of like yeah. states oh, of uh, yeah. states Singed of destruction. Yeah. Like flat. Yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when we get to the Mac Davis episode, there are loads at the same time. <gasps> yeah. It's going to blow Calm your mind. Oh, Lewis. Oh. <laughs> I think we've got a while to go to that. You have like series, season yeah. five. Oh, series Christ. Five. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> we, might not, we might not even be alive by that point. Like, they might not make it. <laughs> Don't say that. Look, it's taken us this long to already get to it. Like, <laughs> it's our fault for make, taking the summer break. <laughs> we go into the finale of the show and we open with uh, a graveyard scene um, and all the kind of like crazy Muppet happy men. Christmas. Yeah, I know. Nothing says happy <laughs> Christmas like <laughs> Julie Andrews being accosted know, in a right? graveyard. <laughs> like, <laughs> Although actually, I suppose in The Sound of Music, when they're hiding from the Nazis, they're in that kind of crypt. So... Yeah, Actually. I mean, there's continuity of scene. Yeah. <laughs> continuity of scene. I always saw this as like, like this could be Cherry Tree Lane, just like the dark yeah, end I of it. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the cheaper end. The houses are definitely yeah. Cherry Tree Lane esque, yeah. aren't they? Oh, I yeah. think when they when they I mean, it doesn't out. help when, whenever yeah. you give Julie Andrews an umbrella, your mind immediately starts going. Oh. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Carry on, Emma. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Anyway, Judy makes her entrance, and I absolutely a dove. A dove. A dove. <laughs> a dove. There are no doves in this. Judy makes her entrance, <laughs> <laughs> and I absolutely adore her rain mac yeah. in Me too. that like peach color, yeah. beautiful thing. And she breaks out into "I Whistle a Happy Tune" um, from the King and I, and just ugh, the whole thing. Her reactions, her dancing, her kind of like expression yeah. is just pure julie andrews it, it's, it's got so many like oh's and like yeah. sort of like that sort of very <laughs> particular sort of noise that she makes it's so uh but i'm like get julie away from these weirdos <laughs> like I'm, yeah <laughs> get back. She just and there are so many of them are. so many <laughs> don't know why this is the first time i've seen the mutations when i've genuinely been a bit like Oh yeah, they're really creepy. I don't know if it's because they're normally yeah. being well, like they give one an eye patch. big lumbering, and they don't. They seem a bit more like zombie. And they're dressed. Yeah, creepy. they are dressed yeah. really creepy. Yeah, and I just feel mm. like normally I kind of feel like I could run away from them fast enough, then they'd be able to catch up with me. But this time I'm like, no, they are coming for you, Julie. <laughs> Even if it is just to get your autograph. Yeah. They've got such long legs, but they're really tall and like skinny. Yeah, yeah, they are. Weird. They're weird. Warwick, in your sort of puppeteering experience have you ever done the full kind of skin suit s- stuff yeah sweetums <gasps> and sweetums. Oh. really yeah 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 and big bird although big bird's different like it's more of a puppet yeah um mm-hmm. i did sweetums in most wanted oh. and the wow. like for a few bits like there's a bit where you know when the t- side of the train falls off yes yeah so by the way i love the old muppets i love the like droop and mildred and all those guys the early 70s Muppets that like slowly made it into the Muppet show but didn't become anything yeah and so there's that scene where the side of the train falls off and Walter's looking out and Sweetums is sat next to Mildred and I'm like yes that's me and Sweetums <laughs> I'm sat next to Mildred like dream date and uh and she's drinking her tea and then I just whacked her on the back and she lurches forward I'm like yeah touch Mildred in a movie <laughs> And then when he's dragging Constantine off the stage. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Constantine falls out of the O. Yeah, yeah. I'm walking backwards with him then. Those are the two moments I can remember. There was other bits, but like those are the, there's a couple of bits that got cut, but those are the bits that like, I was like, oh yeah, that was me. <laughs> it's sweaty, sweaty. Work. Yeah. And I suppose in that scenario, it's not, you're not working with a monitor. Obviously you're just kind of. You see through the mouth. Yeah. So you're just doing it like you are in the scene almost. There's no sort of. Yeah. Uh, you could wear goggles, I suppose, inside. If I, if I had a lot to do. Yeah. I'd probably say, let me have some goggles on. So I could see the uh, camera's picture. Yeah. 
Wow. But uh, you see through the mouth, yeah. Whereas in Big Bird, you have a monitor mm-hmm. on your chest. Like when we did the Skeksis in the Dark Crystal, you have a monitor on your chest. Mm. But they are like puppets on your hand and the body's kind of hanging off them. Whereas Sweetums is you wear it. is a helmet. You wear it. Yeah. I do love Sweetums. Mm. He's such a sort of like, for somebody that who look, can, can look so creepy, it's just such a like, yeah. yeah. He's a charming, charming fella. Yeah. He is actually smaller than I thought. Oh, when really? You, when, you put, when you put him on. I always thought that like his jaw would hang down to like belly button. Mm. So maybe it used to. I don't know. It's got smaller over time. But I was surprised that it's Cost like... a living crisis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was yeah. going to say they've, they've <laughs> Disney-fied it. He's reduced in size. <laughs> yeah, it's been on a diet. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's sweaty work. Yeah, I bet. Inside those. <laughs> Whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head erect and whistle a happy tune so no one will suspect I'm afraid. (laughs) What shivering in my shoes, I spoil a careless pose and whistle a happy tune and no one ever knows I'm afraid. It's a bonkers number, but Julie sells it. Oh, like she there's really no does. Tomorrow. Like there is a there's a she moment does. I think yeah. where she after the bit with the where she's on the ground, um, and then they pull her back up again, and she slightly stumbles, and she just keeps going. She just keeps going. Such yeah. a pro. There's another yeah. bit when they do their sort of like skip off near the end, where she kind of gets like pushed to the back of the two sort of uh, <laughs> yeah. whoever she like performers that she's attached to kind of like in the same way that um you see in a couple of shots of like the wizard of oz where like like the scarecrow or the tim Allen or the lion are just sort of like they push <laughs> yeah. judy garland like out to the back yeah. because that's a sort of so like we're unwieldy. going we're not like, stopping yeah and she's just like okay <laughs> yeah. okay we're going all right <laughs> but yeah but she there like, is, manages there's a bit in there yeah she muscles her way back in yeah she's uh, she's like <laughs> i'm still and she still keeps the time with her little two-step but she's still like trying to push her way in as well i was like good for you julie yeah well that but they can't see yeah well, exactly. oh yeah I'm, I'm sure she's not being it's all muscle memory yeah. and yeah. stuff <laughs> <laughs> so but she's probably petrified because they're massive and they yeah. can't see her they could smack the <laughs> and hell there's like out six of them yeah i counted them there's three mutations big mama timmy monster oh, wait it's three four five dog lion sweetums that's seven Seven of them dancing. That's a lot it's of a lot. dancers in costumes or the puppeteers in costumes because there are puppets going at the same time. Yeah, there's a couple of little freckles as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's like green freckle and there's a lizard. There's Uncle Deadly in there. There's also somebody at the gate at the end. Ooh. There's a there's a cut there where there's a continuity cut where there is a creature back down behind that gate at the end. It looks like that spider with the light up eyes. Do you remember that thing? Oh, I don't know Ugh. if we've seen that. I don't know if it's been yet. Or it's something down there. And then, it, and then they cut to a slightly different angle and it's gone. So it's only there for a bit. Just towards the end. Oh, Extra And there's a hand inside the coffin too. Oh, yeah. There's somebody in that coffin with a hand. I always count up how many people there are. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, so, okay, so who is it then? If, they, if these people are doing that, who's doing that? Yeah. But they probably had dancers yeah. there, I suppose. I mm. just, it just makes me feel like when they're sort of in their almost writer's room being like, we've got Julie Andrews. Let's do a creepy grave. You know what? What says Julie Andrews more than creepy <laughs> graveyard? Uh, sort of. I suppose it's the juxtaposition, isn't it? She's so sweet. Yeah. So let's chuck her in with all the really ugly monsters. Yeah. But I suppose then the twist feels like it should be that she then I don't know gets one up on them somehow yeah. and scares them all off or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, that would be kind of like yeah. uh, sort of ni- nice for Julie to sort of be like, Ugh. you know, but. Yeah, it's a cute one. I mean, she's leading them to the police station, so I guess she's kind of getting her. I know. I thought that was so funny. She's like, there's a pen at the police station. <laughs> yeah. I'd watch this as a whole Halloween special. Yeah. This would be a great Halloween special. <laughs> it's got legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's lovely. It's Yeah, when I realised it came out on Christmas Day, I was a bit like, Huh, but then I was also like, I can totally see why they've yeah. done this. And getting her to sing a whistle a happy tune is just, it's just perfection. <laughs> it's just so lovely. Mm, yeah. Because mm-hmm. she never yeah. did The King and I, did she? Not I don't on think Broadway. so. No. Because I know Angela Lansbury did for a bit, like she covered somebody mm. else, but I don't think Julie ever did it. And then obviously it's Deborah Kerr and Marnie Nixon doing yeah. the voice in the movie. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. But she does some of the King and I stuff in the uh, that Julie on Sesame Street special. Oh god, with we the need Sesame to... Muppets. Okay, we need to it's watch worth watching. Yeah. yeah. Does she do getting to know you? Uh, yeah, I think she does. I mean, that would make sense. Uh, 
Amazing. Right. Well, I, I think so. that's my optimist yeah. choice. <laughs> <laughs> but if any of the listeners like know who that monster is at the gate, I'm interested. I want to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's before she hits the floor, before she jumps down, when they'll go low. It's there for the wide when they're up. But as soon as they go down, it's gone. So why? Who? <laughs> who? Why? Tell, tell me. I need to know. <laughs> well, speaking of who and why, we do get an answer to the question of whose cow is this? <laughs> and it turns out it's Julie Andrews' cow. <laughs> and <laughs> and then that's the end of the episode. I love her description of the it's cow. It's very small. <laughs> it's like that's the, the complete opposite of what it's Big like. lashes. Big, big <laughs> lashes and big brown eyes. <laughs> and then, yeah, the little button at the end, because I did sort of, I did skip that little bit of business. And then suddenly we're going to Gonzo with this cow against a star background. <laughs> yeah. A cow just in a hat. It was such a weird... <laughs> but you shouldn't skip the goodbyes. There's good stuff, because that's ad lib. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I just... Good, look, good stuff. Once, I there. mean, once they cut to the sort of like, then it's just down to the orchestra. I oh, do watch to the music. I, yeah. yeah that well, thing. what's interesting is with this, it runs longer than yeah. this. It goes on because they're just talking. Yeah. I, they were like, oh, this is good stuff. Leave it in. <laughs> so, so the music plays under, but we see more than we ever do before they, we cut to the band. It feels really, really modern compared to obviously like the usual like, bye, cut music yeah. orchestra, Statman Waldorf button on the end. Like this, yeah. Yeah. this felt so playful that you had them continuing to ad lib and it was pure chaos on stage as just well. keeps like, going yeah the goat herd and everything was, were all a pig comes in and he's got he goes i've got the cows hay here what am i supposed to do with it <laughs> and then the the he walks out and the the goat the little goat from before is like hey wait on <laughs> and chases him <laughs> <out of stuff. laughs> oh, and then God. you get the gonzo with the cow joke and saying about the movie or a steak which is just <laughs> so gonzo love it and then my favorite bit was that instead of zoot's bum note he plays a moo and that's cow just moo. yeah oh it's my god good. it's a treat isn't it it's so yeah. great it's so great mm. this is a treat of an episode mm-hmm. and i'm gonna be very intrigued to see how we're all going to rank it for this week but first we must do our mvmp otherwise known as our most valued muppet performer by which we mean muppet the fictional character and mm. not the actual i know <laughs> every week i'm like oh yeah who who are they gonna say? And they were like, and they were like fictional character. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, Warwick, I know we haven't got you for too long. So, who is your MVMP for this week? Well, I think my MVMP is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is Gonzo? Yay! Nice. Yeah. Um, and also Dave Goals. Yeah, we'll take that. Dave, we'll give, we'll give put Dave that in the notes. <laughs> because I think we it, he's just brilliant here, and we get some a little bit of character development, and he's just solid. Like he's solid all the way through. Good acting. Yeah. Good singing. I love the weirdness. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and like we, the first time we see Camilla, so it's a big moment for him. Absolutely. Jade, who are you going for your MVMP this week? I'm going with Warwick. Uh, my MVMP this week is also Gonzo. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> like, Warwick is Warwick my Warwick is my MVMP. <laughs> I wasn't in this. I wish I was in this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thought it was amazing to see a bit of character development for Gonzo this week. I also really enjoyed that he got two numbers, which I think is genuinely yeah. possibly a first, or at least two mm. numbers of his that I've enjoyed anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, mm. he just, it felt so lovely to see him being the kooky, crazy gonzo that we know and love. And hey, I hope him and the cow had a great date, even if he did <laughs> <laughs> abandon Camilla on the dance floor. Yeah, You'll never find <laughs> out. <laughs> Emma, who's your MVMP this week? Um, I think... My MVMP for this week is going to be Kermit, um, purely for his moment with Julie and like the song for Kermit. And they're just pure love. It was just like the sweetest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And Kermit just loves Julie Andrews. And I just love the fact that that whole kind of relationship in that, you know, portion of the show was just so sweet and like i said so pure so and true yeah. his like adoration yeah. for julie was just so clear to see and i just think that i love the fact that you know even in the very opening number he just gets in to like do the line for the prince but i feel like kermit like just wanted to be there so he was in something yeah. again you know with julie <laughs> yeah. so i think for that i'm gonna say kermit is my MVMP for this episode. Um, how about you, Lewis? Emma, I'm also going to go along the sweet line, and my MVMP for this week is the Beaver. <laughs> 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 
I think it's just such a hilarious little puppet, and it's so nicely done, and it's got such a little character to it. It feels almost vindictive in the way that it's going like, <laughs> like I just, I think it's great, and it's one of those just little like pops up, does its business, it's hilarious, it looks gorgeous, and it's done. Mm-hmm. So, Chisel Tooth the Beaker, the be- Beaver. Chisel Tooth the Beaver. Is that is, is that its official name? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm just checking. It was made Look, up. I wasn't going to question yeah, I just it. Christened like, him. <laughs> well, I love it. We'll it to, call him Chisel Tooth. Yeah, we're giving it to Chisel Tooth. <laughs> yeah, so that's my MVMP. All right, let's go on to our rankings for this week. Uh, we'll reverse the order. Emma, why don't you kick us off? What are you giving this week's episode? Oh, see, this is really tough because uh, I feel like. There are a couple of bits that maybe like slightly kind of pull my ranking down just from like the news flash wasn't that great. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I know, right? Um, but I think I'm going to give it nine lonely goat herds out of ten. Very good. Um, I think it was so much fun. Julie was just like totally in it. Every time she was on screen, she was giving 100%, you know. I do feel like we could have had more Julie Andrews, like, <laughs> somehow. Always. <laughs> Always. Um, so I think that's why I'm going to give it a nine for this episode. Because although they did use her really well, she wasn't underused. I do feel like maybe some of the more, like, little sketches or bits could have been taken out and maybe they could have done uh, something else with her. Mm. Um, so I think that's why I'm going to go with that for this one. Um, how about you, Jade? Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Because I think this is... <sighs> I think this might be my overall favourite episode that we've had so far. I think it's really, really solid. Um, so I'm going to go 9 out of 10 mermaid chickens. <laughs> but I yeah I agree like I think there's a there's a couple of bits that I would maybe change the zucchini brothers probably being one of the first bits that comes to mind I just don't need the zucchini brothers even if all of the flying across the screen was quite fun yeah and I think just that like that split second of thinking that you're getting a ballroom sketch you're just like why are we going out the dance <laughs> but you were rewarded <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, I don't know. I felt like we were kind of like sideswiped, and then we still got it snuck in in the yeah. middle. Like anyway, I was sort of like kind of like a slap and a kiss. But I think it's a really, really lovely episode. I think Julie's used perfectly. Everyone's on at the top of their game, and yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Long, long may this level continue. Mm, uh, yes. I hope so. Yeah, Warwick, how about you? I give it nine out of ten tadpoles and fishes. <laughs> nice, lovely. <laughs> so four point four point five each. Like there's a point five of a tadpole and a point five of a fish. <laughs> um, and it would have got ten out of ten, but the sand bit dragged. So yes, otherwise, like I'm very pretty happy. This and the Elton John episode are my favourite episodes. They are my top two. Lewis. How do you rate it? <laughs> uh, so I I cheated slightly. I've just had a look back at all the rankings I've done so far this season. And for me, I'm going to put it at my at the same mark that I gave to my other favourite episode of the season, uh, which was actually the Rudolf Nureyev episode, mm. uh, which I thought was just camp gold. So I'm mm. going to give it eight and a half Von Trapp children out of ten. Um, <laughs> I think you're right. I think there's just a couple of bits that just do drag slightly. It's usually just whenever we're away from Julie Andrews that it's slightly weakening. I really enjoyed the episode, but I think a lot of that is also just down to the supreme amount of goodwill that I have for Julie Andrews as a human being. I was mm-hmm. I was sort of wondering if this was just another performer given this same episode, would I feel the same way and should that mm. impact my scoring or not? But who cares? Like I love her. She's great. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to I'm just going to put it at my at my current peak for the season so far and say yeah, mm-hmm. eight and a half Von Trapp children out of 10. Rates quite highly. Oh, it does. It yeah, is. absolutely. Mm. I mean, the only reason my the Elton John episode isn't high for me is because I think Elton John is terrible it's somewhere when he's else. Not singing. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. just like he's just like a really bad actor. <laughs> like it's just, it's and it's awful, really at least yeah. like so low energy as well. And it's such an yeah. odd like. Thing. I enjoy the awkwardness. Like, yeah, I just well, <laughs> yeah, it's just like yeah, curb your enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jade, what have you got for us this week in your Jade's Muppet Book Club Club Corner Club? <laughs> 
We need to come up with a title. <laughs> that is the title. I don't know. Oh, yeah, sorry. I did. We have landed on that being <laughs> the title. title. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to read another section from Jim Henson, The Works, this week. I was flicking through the section on The Muppet Show, and there was this little bit about uh, that kind of talks about like being on set for it. And I thought, seeing as we have an actual real life Muppet puppeteer with us this week, it might be uh, quite a nice thing to talk about the, the vibe of the set. Mm. There has never been a place quite like the set of The Muppet Show. If you had walked out onto stage D while the show was in production, you might well have found a frog or a bear chatting to an Academy Award winning actor or a world renowned opera star, not for the benefit of the camera, but just for the sake of making conversation. Or you might have overheard a pig chewing out a subordinate porker for having dared to stand in for her during rehearsals. Not that any script called for this behaviour. It was just another example of the silliness that tended to set in once the line between everyday reality and Muppet reality had been crossed. In the workshop, Richard Hunt would answer the telephone in Scooter's voice, Elstree Studios here, home of the world famous Muppet show! And there were times when the ad-libbing was funnier than the script. Sometimes this ad-libbing was used to keep the guest star loose. Mostly, though, it was the norm. The Muppet performers were having fun, and so the Muppets they controlled seemed to be having fun too, on camera and off. That's what I live by. To me, that's yeah. like the, the holy scriptures. Like, that's how I do it. That, we just want the characters to live. So as soon as we're in and we put the puppets on, they, their day begins, you know. And like, and then you hear about what happened the night before or last week or where they're going this evening or, you know, how their shopping didn't arrive on time. <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> it's just a constant stream of that kind of thing. <laughs> or whatever, so that kind whatever of, comes up <laughs> yeah. yeah so that kind of energy and feeling is still very much reflective of how it is to still be working with the uh the muppets now yeah 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 one of the directors when we were doing gonger and cookie monster on sesame street he came in to give us some notes and he was like uh looking at us and it's like and how do i how do i get into this and he's like this is like jazz so i don't know how to <laughs> get involved <laughs> because what you two are doing there is like just I don't know where it begins and ends. It's just like, yeah. there's no real structure. It's just like happening, you know. One of the things that I feel like often kind of goes viral is those kind of uh, Muppet outtakes or, you know, when yeah. Muppets are guests on talk shows or something like that. Yeah. It's always just sort of like, it feels, it goes beyond like the, the fiction of like the Muppet show or the Muppet movie. Yeah, yeah, then when yeah. you sort of see them just kind of existing as people. So when you see them yeah. like bantering off camera. Yeah, that's what happens. What you see on, yeah. on those talk shows is what happens between takes. They they just live their lives. They're like actors, you know, like they yeah. they, they wake up as it were <laughs> when we put well. them on. And then <laughs> and they live their life until the three, two, one, and then they act their piece, which would always be lively anyway, because we're trying to keep it, you know, uh snappy and, and good mm -hmm. and not, you know, if it's the same every single time it gets boring. So you try and keep it real, keep it alive. And then when it when you shout cut, they probably will carry on yeah. commenting or telling somebody how they did their job wrong or <laughs> 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 that kind of thing. Oh, you know, that's, it's just amazing, Warwick. I know we need to let you go. It's thank you so much for joining us today. It's been just such a joy and such a fantastic insight. And I think we're almost certainly going to have to ask you to come back because I feel like we've only just scratched the surface of like yeah. anecdotes. I'll come back for Cleo Lane, the 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 rehash of the Cleo. <laughs> oh, 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 right, so you'll be here in like six years when we go around to do season two again. Yeah, when we come back again. <laughs> well, I'll come back for Linda Lavin. Linda Lavin. I only yeah. know that again. Again, these names of these certain people, I only know them from The Simpsons. Like the Linda Show, Romstadt, I only oh. know from The Simpsons. <laughs> or like Linda Lavin like pops up in like a joke about The Simpsons. It's just That's a goodie, so I'll gladly come back for that. It's Kermit's birthday. Oh. Do okay, well, oh, well you're you're, you're booked. <laughs> so we'll let you know when we need <laughs> We can have a party. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Warwick, where can people find you online? Well, you can find me on all social medias at Warwick BP and on youtube.com slash Warwick BP. It's all so easy now. It's all the same. Yeah, <laughs> streamlined. Um, right, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to all of you at home for listening to Muppet Sational. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review as it really helps spread the word about the podcast. You can follow us on social media. We are at Muppet Sational on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and Facebook. You can contact us at hiho at muppetspodcast.com and you can find out more about us and the podcast at muppetspodcast.com. Warwick, 
thank you again. I know this has been like quite a bumper couple of hours, but we really no, appreciate it. This is it. the perfect way to spend a couple of hours. Like, I'm going to do this again anyway. I'm going to go and talk to anybody that listens to <laughs> throughout the day all about this. So I mean, if you want to take a mic, we'll release it. it. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll release it tonight. Um, so until next time, uh, I've been Lewis Chandler. I've been Jade Turner. And I've been Emma Chandler. And I've been Warwick Brownlow Pike. <laughs> you have. <laughs> we shall see you all, the Warwick one, on another episode of Puppet Sational. Bye. 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 Our theme music is Peppy Pepe by Kevin MacLeod and our artwork is designed by Charlotte Rudge who you can follow at at charlie underscore r underscore rudge on Instagram. That was a funny show. Yes, it was. I wonder if they meant it that way. (laughs) 